calling the necessary software uh, because later on I will allocate enough time whereby everyone can install the two software that uh, I included in the instructions yesterday. Um, and I will also go around and help you girls and guys in the installation and setting up. Yes! Oh, okay, I thought you were simply. Yeah, actually, it's under. Yeah, it's sort of. Do I really need to use the mic? Yeah, because um. They cannot hear you. Okay, alright. Yeah, I'm not really a huge fan of a mic user, so. Um, but anyways, um, first off, um, a very good morning to everybody. Um, my name is Jeffrey. Um, before I actually start off, first I would just like to you know make some apologies because. This is sort of the last minute thing for me. I was only informed to you know, give or fill in this session earlier this week. So um, some of my materials are like, you know, put together from various sources in a very short amount of time. So they might not necessarily be catered to um, be understandable. So just hope you don't mind. And uh, with that in mind, um, I, I just hope that this, this session today um, will be more of like an uh, interactive um, session. I, I don't want it to be where I just you know sleep for the entire morning and no response from any one of you. So if you got any you know comments, any questions, um, just feel free to um, stop me at any point of time and ask them. Um, I, I'll, I'll try to give it more hands-on. Um, I mean, which is why I sort of was uh, pointed out the links to some of the software that um, you guys can install. And uh, during some of my slides, perhaps you all can you know try out as you go along. And yeah, hopefully everyone can learn a little bit of something along the way at the end of the session. All right. Okay. Um, I understand that the um, the uh, schedule, or I should say, the, uh, the the course curriculum is something to do with um, data warehousing. But uh, that's not really what I'm going to talk about today uh, because data warehousing to me is more like a term which is getting more and more in gel with uh, the normal database management system. So in fact, I'm going to talk a little bit more about database management system because I think that will be more relevant to every one of you um, in your day-to-day -day work. Um, but before that, can I have a show of hands who has you know, dealt with database systems before? One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. So let's see how. Yeah, you got Sure. Uh, hello, uh, some of you can get into Wi-Fi. Actually, I cannot get into Wi-Fi either. Just now, I asked the IDA staff. Uh, she said that someone maybe had went to the illegal site. The government does not allow the Wi-Fi will be automatically cut off. Oh, really? So, uh, I don't know how the government de define illegal. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 we just log off all the Wi-Fi. Then we just, um, yeah, uh, connect to your iPhone. You may have to close all your website. Yeah. I know, uh, yeah. Just try it. Okay, this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm going to wait for a couple minutes for everyone to settle down. Yeah. Oh, 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 Okay. 
一下你那个 S M。对 ，OK。那么你这边你就太多了。哎<笑>、欸，不要，再睡一会儿，这边。还、哎、有。这个上面有放在这个呃包装里面。啊？那个上面有放在包装里面吗？啊，没有，因为那个上面太大，所以没有办法。对。呃、uh, ，Well， just to make things clear， 呃、uh, ，the document that I'm building in the Google Sheet right now。The necessary software, which is X A M P P, I'll tell you what it all stands for later. And the My SQL Workbench, you all have to download it separately. But if the government prevents us from logging onto the Wi-Fi, I've got a lost thumb drive somewhere in the class, which contains the necessary software. I've got another spare thumb drive down here, but I think some non-Mac machines will not be able to use it. Mac software, Mac guys, Mac girls can turn it into an episode. Just copy the contents from the thumb drive to your computer and just pass it along, okay? So as you are going along, I think I'll just start off the session. Uh, so basically, the outline as you can see down here is what I'm going to cover uh, today. Uh, well, the duration is just a rough estimate. Um, when I was running through a dry run this morning, I think I'll take much less time than that. Uh, yeah, so the very first uh, session, which is, um, I say it's going to take one hour, but I think it will finish in 15 minutes, is actually a quick introduction to um, database management system. You know, just to give everyone a brief overview what all this management stuff is all around, okay? And after that, um, the second session is actually the setting up and the installation of my SQL because subsequently there's going to be hands-on exercises which requires the use of the software. And um, yeah, it would be good if everyone can at least have those software up and running on the, on the computer. I put 30 minutes, but I guess looking at the progress, it's going to take like one and a half hours maybe. Uh, and then we're going to have another session three, which is on the relational databases. And uh, okay, you don't have to worry about what you understand by ER diagram. It's not emergency room or anything. It's just an acronym for something simple. And um, I'm just trying to make it simple, uh, easy to understand. I hope. Um, after that, we we'll break for lunch. Uh, hopefully, I'll have student presentations. I mean, I prepared some couple of questions and. Some exercises for you to try, and I don't want to speak too much after lunch because I'll be sleepy. So maybe I'll just ask some students to just come on and you know, present their answers and put it up as a general discussion with the class. Um, that should take one hour. And uh, the last session of the um, of the afternoon will be on structured query language, which is how you as humans interact with the database to perform all the querying and all the whatnot. And after that, I'll just end up this session with you hands-on exercises. So before I carry on, any questions, comments? No, nothing? Good, awesome. Okay, so first session, quick introduction to the database management system. Okay, ignore the comic, I just put it there for fun. <laughs> now, as you all know, um, I, I guess every one of us uh, have already been you know, exposed to the fact that we are actually generating tons and tons of data around us. I mean, data is basically pretty much everywhere, okay? So, um, I mean, data are just like, you know, records, information, and uh, somehow or rather, we will require systems to help, us, to help us store it, as well as to manage that. In fact, all the, all the programs, everything in your everyday lives already has some form of database management, you know, managing them. I mean, a very good example is like, for instance, your, you know, mobile phones, all the address books, the WhatsApp, even the social applications like, you know, Facebook, um, we, not WeChat, that's a Snapchat. Wow, you guys know Snapchat, eh? Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the, I like the photograph that came function when it's, you stored your face, but anyways. Um, yeah, so somehow all these kind of applications and even, you know, I don't know who likes to do online shopping. Log shop. Ah, okay. Online shopping, okay. So, oh, and another online shopping. Yeah, so basically all the applications that you use, somehow or rather they all have a database system uh, powering them. 
managing their data and ensuring that your orders don't go to somebody else. Um, they will also have features to help protect and encrypt your personal data like your know, credit card number, this kind of uh, things, so and so forth. And interestingly, um, although I won't talk in detail about this one, but the data security is also one of the important features of what a database management system will do, right? I mean, I, I, I don't know how often, did you guys read, do you girls read the news, you know, sometimes they have like, oh, okay, this bank lost like, you know, a whole tons of credit card to outside hackers. Now, these are instances whereby they did not protect their data well enough, okay? So this kind of management is um, pretty important and they cannot be, you know, solved by just using a simple same um, Excel spreadsheet or, um, or, or uh, normal text documents. Now, just to give you an idea of uh, what I kind of thought was interesting, is that, I mean, the last decade we've been uh, faced with an unprecedented uh, growth in terms of the amount of data that we're actually generating and creating. So this is actually a very um, simple infogram. Um, if you all have slides, you can take a look because it's very cluttered uh, down here. But in every five, and this, this infogram is actually made in 2012. We are already right now in 2016. So you can expect the numbers to be um, exponentially much more than what is actually in this infogram. So like for instance, every five minutes, you have things like, you know, 270 new users in the mobile web, um, 48 hour world of data uploaded to YouTube and all this, so on and so forth. Just, you know, multiply that by several times. That's the amount of data that the entire world needs to, needs to uh, manage. Um, so, okay, in that case, this is actually more like a whole point slide. Because not that hopefully you all can see that with this huge amount of data, we need systems to help capture and store the data. And uh, I, okay, the next one is instead of just um, capturing and storing the data for those doing businesses, I mean, I don't know who's in the finance industry. I know one is the finance industry, banking. Okay, and uh, banking industry, oh, okay, cool, awesome. Uh, yeah, and also for finance, anyways. Uh, basically every sector, education, you know, uh, media, whatever, you will need to do some form of, of, of marketing as well. You will need to do some form of you know analysis on the type of customers that you are you know that you're having, and to make uh, to make strategic choices in the kinds of decisions that you make at work, right? So um, database management systems not only allow us to store and manage data, they will allow us to also query and uh, perform you know fanciful analytics so that in your day-to-day -day work, um, you can make proper decisions. And it's not just commercial applications. I mean, even in your own personal lives. I don't know, I mean, some people might, you know, might, I, I don't know, um, some people who have blogs, they would like to know what is their blog hit, this kind of stuff, so as to determine what kind of content they want to put the blog size. So these are some of the, um, the, the analytics that they were finding useful, even in their personal lives as well, like for instance, you know, my Facebook likes, um, and I feel that, okay, this picture doesn't have a lot of likes, let's change picture, you know, number of likes go up, something like that. Okay, so um, with all these things in mind, um, actually, if you think about it, there's a lot of um, software out there which can actually help us manage, but I think I put this up for, for, for show, um, is because I think most, I would believe most people would have exposed to the use of Excel to store and manage your um, data. So, and I understand that last week you all have a session on Excel. Okay, who use data to, who use Excel to, you know, like store records and everything? Again. <laughs> really? So few? Wow, okay. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, so if you take a look at it, Excel is actually good as a, something like a primitive database system. But later I'll show to you why in terms of, you know, when you have um, more data and more so-called relationships between them, um, Excel will start to break down, okay? So, but for the most basic usage, yeah, Excel is excellent, as the name implies. Why? Because there's no complicated setup, just open up a spreadsheet from touch. 
um, you know, enter your records and go. You don't even need to specify what kind of records, just type and do whatever stuff that you want to do. Um, you can perform simple uh, functions like you know, sorting, filtering, analytical functions. But today, hopefully, I can show you more fanciful ways of you know, doing so in a proper database system. Whereby you can, uh, I mean, for those girls, you can take when you press the boyfriends for the uh, employees, you can take and press the boss. Um, yeah, Excel has no gibberish looking language, sort of, uh, unless you want to use like DBA. I think you all should have had a session on DBA, right? So, uh, yeah, that can be used as well, but I think most of the general public won't have exposure to DBA as well. Um, you can plot simple graphs tables and it's actually visually appealing for small data sets okay so before we carry on I'll just like you every one of you I, I'm sorry because I'm used to saying you guys but this is a coding girl so I got to <laughs> stop a little bit yeah anyways um, if you open up your Google um, Drive I've actually put in an Excel spreadsheet uh, inside this is just to let every one of you have a feel of what it's like trying to manage data using Excel and only they can appreciate SQL itself. So, can you all just open up the special? It's a bit quieter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me you're the next special install. Okay, I also, I also open up mine. Right, everybody on the same street? Okay, uh, I'm just going to assume that at, any, at one point of time, you know, in all your lives, that you have been exposed to such kind of using Excel spreadsheets to manage your data. Okay, over here is a um, free data set that I got off the web, Sakula, but it's, uh, I'm not going to explain what individual tab means, but basically, I will assume that when you organize the data in Excel, you will be somewhat similar, like you have actors in the, uh, this spreadsheet, and uh, each column will represent uh, yeah, an attribute or something uh, to a record. So you have like, you know, penalty, penis, and you know, who the hell is that? Um, then you have a separate tab for address, you know, uh, categories, cities, whatever, so on and so forth. And using this Excel spreadsheet, you can actually answer simple questions already, okay? Like for example, uh, hold on. Uh. Okay, like for example, you have to ask yourself this question How many NC17 films are there in your database? I mean, using Excel spreadsheet is pretty straightforward. You just go to a uh, NC17. You just go to um, film, and uh, you can type. You can add a filter down there. I hope last week you all have this. If not, I'll teach you right now, free of charge. Um, yeah, and you can already do simple filtering. Okay, and you can see I've already filtered. I just, need, I just need to count the number of records down here and boom. It will give me like the number of, you know, NC17 fields. I think around 100 plus. Um, you can also answer simple questions like, uh, you know, how many actors have the last name Benny? Right, same thing, and then just go to the, uh, the column. Type in the filter and do whatever filtering that you want. Last name, right? Uh, yeah, so as you can see, you can chart the stuff. Yeah, all these are very simple operations. You can do that. I mean, no big deal. But what happens when you start to wrap it up? Okay? So, your boss. Let's say, for instance, if you are managing the, uh, let's, say, let's just say, assuming that you are, rent, are managing the rental store, and then one finding your boss asks, "Hey, I want to know in each film category how many films are there." So, um, I don't know. Can you girls spend like you know one minute trying to find out from the Excel spreadsheet and answer that question for me? Yeah, try that. Oh, for your information, these are just random questions that I hope I have. Absolutely no one's in there. Uh, 
and for the more uh, students who want to challenge themselves, they can maybe try answering the last two questions. Which actor has appeared in most films in the store and how many customers are from South Korea? I don't see a lot of students. 16. Really? Okay, cool. Awesome. You have to do a lot of clicks. I, I do not know the answer. I'm just going to assume that you're correct. Okay, great. Later we'll revisit using SQL and see where you're at if we have enough time for that. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I hope that for those who tried, you can see that you are having a pretty difficult time trying to answer the questions. For some of them, not all of them. Uh, I mean, they, they can be answered by Excel. Um, it's just that depending on your level of expertise, for some people, you just need to click, 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 answer. Some people might be, oh my god, I need to do this, add the local, you know, write the Excel. But um, hopefully, by the end of the session, I can let you all see that um, using a more mature, or more sophisticated management system, you are actually able to answer all these questions in a relatively much shorter amount of time. And by the way, that. Excel spreadsheet, but we have several tabs, that's considered storage. Um, the thumb drive that I passed around, um, that's actually what data found. It's not in, in uh, Excel because Excel is not able to open it. It actually has millions of records. So if you try to <coughs> you know, look through millions of records in Excel spreadsheet, so that's where things start to get pretty funky. Okay, um, yeah, so when the number of records grows big, and uh, the next point is more important when there are different types of data sets that have relationship with one another. Okay, so then the Excel also starts to become a little bit more unwieldy. Like just now, the, the first two queries that I show you, those are actually just queries within within the individual um, tab itself. But when you need to cross reference, you know, data from different tabs, okay, so it becomes a little bit more difficult. And uh, Okay, in addition to that, uh, this is a little bit more you know, higher up, is that we need to have concurrent access to the same data source. Right now, each and every one of you are having your own version of the Excel spreadsheet, so it's pretty fine. But let's say you have one company you know, where you have many sales person, each one of them trying to you know, update the same Excel spreadsheet with whatever transaction that they have made, it becomes um, pretty much a nightmare. All right? So um, a database system is supposed to uh, handle that. Um, but just one disclaimer, today the exercises that you guys are making, sorry, you girls are making, you guys and girls are making. <laughs> they are local, so mean to say only you have access to that. But theoretically, if we actually have an intranet work, you can actually connect to the database that is right now currently uh, running off my machine right now. But that is probably you can connect to the data right now you would have so it's just I think it's the right the point. And also when you need to use data as a source for other front-end applications like uh, you know uh, and the website and stuff. I mean imagine a website trying to read data on an Excel spreadsheet is gonna be uh, it's, yeah it's gonna be quite messy. Okay. So we've talked about database database management system. So what exactly is it? Um, I mean, if you do a Google search on the database management system on Google, I mean, I think it's just going to return you a tons of, I mean, aside from Wikipedia, really it's just going to return you a tons of, um, you know, products or software out there, okay? And um, of course, they are both promotion open source um, DBMS, but for this session, um, in fact, not just for this session, we thought we were going to see that for most of even the more mature corporations, they are actually using the um, open source um, database management system. And out of the many database management system, which I'm going to use EBMS to uh, refer to that uh, from this point onward, we can roughly classify them into uh, SQL and uh, no SQL. So basically SQL is what we call the relational models. Um, I'll explain what relational models mean by that later. Um, in fact, up to the last few years, pretty much everything is under this category. Um, it's only in the recent years where we start to have this term big data being tossed around. 
So that's where the other kinds of database uh, models start coming in. And those categories, we all currently classify them under, well, obviously no SQL. You know, we say that it's not SQL. But we're not going to go to that thing, just to let you know. So some of the popular products for SQL and no SQL. Uh, by the way, just one fun fact. Um, last time around, they used to pronounce SQL as SQL. Um, there's two schools of thought, some say that SQL is the correct term, some say SQL is the correct term. I have no opinion whatsoever, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so for SQL, you have the more popular products like you know, MySQL, um, uh, Postgres, SQL Server for Microsoft, Oracle, so and so forth. And for no SQL, which can be any type of database system, you have like Mongo, Cassandra, release, so and so forth. But for today, um, I'm just going to focus a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to focus entirely on my SQL because that is the one that is uh, being used by quite a lot of um, um, corporations out there. So why do we need database management system? Well, um, just now I mentioned about uh, a lot of data being generated, so and so forth, and you need a system to, to, to store and manage it. But actually, if you think about it, there's actually much more than that. Um, because when you have data in itself, it doesn't really hold any meaning. Okay? So, I mean, as humans, we usually like to classify things, we like to categorize things. So that's where the DDMS uh, starts coming in, because they provide a natural means for us to give um, structure to the, uh, the data. Okay? Meaning to, say, meaning to say that it's like more like organizing. I mean, I'm sure that all you girls and guys out there, when you are studying, you will keep all your note action notes in proper folders, you know, in different categories. So similarly, that's what DBMS does to all the data sets, okay? And not only that, uh, it helps us draw some relationship between them, okay? That makes it like for one particular data point, how is it related to another data point which um, later there will be some examples to, to, to show you. Um, it allows you to do simple operations, um, create retrieve updates as well as delete the data. Okay, um, you although I'm not gonna focus too much on this, but in your future readings you're gonna see a lot of this term called crude CRUD. So that's pretty much uh, a key way of saying that you can do manipulation to the data. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a front letter of the basic operations, create, retrieve, update, delete. And uh, when you have multiple users, uh, the DDNS is also supposed to allow for currency, security, as well as data um, integrity. Okay, so that much for DBNS. Now I'm just gonna do a side digression because after all, I think um, all of you would have seen from the email that this is actually a session on data warehouse, but Surprisingly, I didn't even touch a single term of data warehousing. Uh, yeah, because uh, data warehouse is, to me, more like a generic term used for enterprises. Uh, in your day-to-day -day work, even when you're dealing with databases, you won't even hit the word data warehouse. And in fact, this is more like an academic kind of discussion rather than an actual thing. So, but what, just for your interest, what it actually means is it's more like a collective of databases, okay? and sources that allow for reporting and data analysis. So DBNS, if you can look at it this way, is a little bit like a subset of a data warehouse. Okay. Data warehouse is just like a, a, a fuzzy term to describe the whole collective um, databases that's been used in a, uh, in a corporation. So these are just some of the work out of your fancy terms that you will see like, you know, whatever, temporal data, this kind of money money stuff, which off the record doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, so even though they have a lot of people, you know, or experts in data warehousing, but in actuality, I mean if you were to look in the industry, whenever they refer to data warehouse, they are pretty much referring to you know database. And the database um, the DBMS that we're used to is um, under the data warehousing terminology is more focused towards what they call the OLTP or online transaction processing. Whereas data warehouse is more for online analytical processing. To me, um, again off the record, oh, it's actually recorded anyway. 
um, is uh, more like it's hot wash because the thing is that with the uh, increasing power of you know computers as well as the uh, the increasing efficiency of all these DBMS systems, what you find is that the DBMS can actually perform a lot of you know um, large scale data operations in the industry already without really referring to the concept of data warehousing. So which is why. This is the reason why I'm not going to talk about data warehouse, but I'm just going to focus more on you know, DBMS. You'll find that you have corporations, large corporations, that pretty much run entirely the entire operation of MySQL, MySQL. Okay. Like for instance, um, the most popular one being Facebook. But of course, Facebook, they have a lot more stuff now, but even as you said, as the of the entire database is kept in MySQL. Wow. Right. So, uh, I say 15 minutes is really quite 15 minutes from one hour. Okay, so uh, hopefully by these few slides, uh, I can let you all have a, uh, a quick overview of uh, DBNS, why it is important, and, uh, and how pretty much it affects you, uh, basically affects your everyday lives even without you noticing. Because I think all of you are exposed to it somehow, it's just that y'all do not realize it. So hopefully I come here to you know give you more awareness of um, what you're actually dealing with. So with that, I would like to end the session one. Is there any questions or comments? What is your background? What is my background? Oh okay, um yeah, I am a computer science major from NFS. Okay, uh, my career started off in um, research, bioinformatics research. So, which is why all the data comes in. Because in life science, uh, they also deal with, it's, it's not just web bench right now, really. Now it's a lot more than that. They have things like microarray machines, protomics arrays, which basically provides millions and millions of data points. So, storing this kind of data and managing and analyzing them is uh, what I do on a daily -day basis. Last time. But uh, four years ago, I jumped in the street, so now I'm in the finance industry. Again, I see numbers. Uh, right now, it's you know financial numbers. But still, database is still uh, uh, quite important. And yes, I do use my SQL key. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, awesome. What else do I know? <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn, no problem. Okay? What, really? No, no, no questions. Huh? You see that? Two words are explaining or you know, don't really know what I'm talking about. I'll take the first one. Okay. Uh, right. In that case, since it's still early, um, okay, can I have, can I know who hasn't installed the two software that I asked you to install? Can you all download and install it right now? I, I can walk around helping you. For those who have already installed, please try to run that. Uh, okay. There's just this. Yeah, there's two software that I need to try to install. One is the uh, the the my SQL server, which is available via this thing called X A N P P, and the other one is the uh, my SQL patch. Hey, by the way, this can be granted. You don't have to listen to me. For those who already you know install, can just go ahead and you know do whatever types of stuff you want to do. But I'll just rattle off for for a few more minutes. Uh, just now I mentioned that my SQL is the second. Most widely used RDBMS um, in the world is uh, it is true. Um, if you look at the UK Wiki, it's actually down there. We had to it yesterday, um, but I highly suspect that it's popular because it's free, and uh, it is actually a, a kind of a client server mode of operation, which is whereby you have a server running as backend, managing all the data, and you have a front end to connect to it and uh, create. It, which is why I need to install this software. Anyone has problems on this? By the way, S-A-M-P-P -P is just an acronym for, for, I forgot. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the A stands for Apache, the M stands for MySQL, the P and the P stands for Pro and PHP. It's actually a whole stack solution for online type stuff, but um, I use that because it's easy to install and it has an M thing inside which is MySQL. But it comes with a lot, lot of other rubbish which we are not going to touch today. Okay, so how it looks like is once oh. 
uh, you, if you have the top drive, you don't really need to go to that college. Or are you trying to find out what SAS is this as well? Okay. Uh, So for those who have installed, you should be able to see a screen something like that. Um, just make sure that when you click on my SQL database, it's running. Okay, I think I'll see you. Okay, hold on. I've got some problem with my... Yeah, I'll pass you up so you don't have to worry about that. Pass around, please. Yeah. Uh, okay, just. Okay, you all can get busy with your stuff. I'll just walk around and help you if you want. So, yes, yours is running. Yours? This one is running. This one? Uh, no, it ain't gone. Start, just start. Okay, yeah, so it's running. So it's running around. Then I can use the bench to connect it. Okay, okay. So please start everything. You can start everything if you want to. But I'm only interested in my my SQL. So just make sure that that one is green, that that will be fine. I need to check my own as well. Yeah. Uh, when you notice, right, there is three options, which is my SQL for Excel, my SQL for Visual Studio, or my Visual Studio. Snack. The Snack. 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 Snack.
Just one minute. I just need to make sure that mine is all running. Yes. No problem just now. You might even just switch, switch out the connection for a while. Sure. I just not recognizing. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit embarrassing. Um, I checked my machine this morning, it works, but now it doesn't work. <laughs> just let me get my own one startup. For those who don't have, who do not have this thing, 
Okay, just click on this plus button down here. And uh, everything is standardized, you don't have to type anything except maybe your connection name. You want to give you a fancy name, just say my super awesome connection. And uh, click enter and yeah, and just like it. Uh, before that, you might want to test the connection first. And continue anyways. Bing! Successfully made OK. Then just click OK. And it should appear as a second as a link down there. For those who are using an older version of uh, SQL Workbench, it may look somewhat similar. Uh, it may not have the plus button down there, but um, I mean, I walked around and saw some using the older version, but it should be somewhat similar. So please try commenting into that. Because without the client software, you will not be able to harness the power of the um, SQL um, server. Right? And now, while well, you guys are still setting up, I can still walk around. Who's having problems right now? Okay. One, two.
Okay, uh, for those who managed to get this up started, I mean, while some of your classmates are still trying to get it up, um, maybe I'll just spend a couple of minutes running uh, you through this interface. Uh, it may not look very fanciful when you first start it up. That's pretty much because, um, yeah, you have not input anything yet, which I hope later on we will change that. But you can see down here the interface is um, actually um, to gigs like me, it looks natural. To so some of you, you might see like I have no idea what the hell is going on. So uh, you can see that this is like a navigation panel uh, for you to uh, navigate the different databases that you have in the server. Alright. Um, the site down here should look something like this. I mean, I've already got things because um, I mean, I've already pre prepared some stuff, but you should at least have things like my DD. Which is uh, which has the tables down here. Okay, sorry, this is mine. You should at least have PHP my admin. These are the different databases that comes together with the uh, S A N P P. And this is the place later on which you will type in your queries, your structured query language, to uh, basically pretty much talk to the database server. And uh, over here, down here, this is like a little bit like an Excel um, spreadsheet kind of stuff. Uh, to show you the results, and these are just like the logs, so you don't really have to worry much about that. And um, hopefully, by the end of the day, you can at least start to issue uh, a few simple questions um, to the uh, server to do whatever things that you need. But later on, um, I will explain to you, I, I won't go into detail what all these buttons are, uh, but two of the things that you think of is this uh, thunder light thing down here. Okay, this is pretty much, well, Lightning always needs to execute. So um, when you type in the command, um, you just need to click either one of these two to execute the query and send it to all, all the database. The rest of the stuff, don't have to worry. You don't really need to use that. Um, another thing that we need to be, uh, that later on you get to use and see is the, um, let's take a look. Uh, Okay. When you click on new 
new model, um, this will be something that comes out. Okay. Um, the reason why I okay for those who are interested, this is something aside. Okay. Most of the time in commercial world, uh, for those GPT backend people like me, um, if we just use this. We can actually use this to connect to the database. I don't think I have any sorry. Okay, no, the command is not in. But yeah, we use this command line to, 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 to connect it, to type in all the stuff, which is, <coughs> I think if I want to ask you girls to try that, I think I will be able to make it on this room alive. That's why I want to use, um, that's why I want you all to use uh, the like, SQL mesh, because this provides a sort of like a, a, a nice graphical uh, user interface for you to interact, and at the same time, um, it also gives you a graphical view of what your data structure looks like. I'm sure some of you have already tried opening some of the files, um, even though uh, it's not really green, but let me just see where you can. So you'll see that you'll need this type of diagrams, which later on I will go into a little bit more detail to show you the way in which they structured the data. So that's all you see, the, the things that you see in the Excel spreadsheet, these are actually how it relates to one another. Right? Uh, yeah, so the power of this uh, of this tool is that you'll be able to give you a sort of like a graphical view of what your data actually looks like in terms of its uh, structure and relationship. Okay, I mean us humans we respond more uh, positively towards images rather than you know pure data, which basically I think if you see that every single day you just tear away, tear away. But yeah, this will give you a better way of you know managing and thinking about your data. Yeah, don't worry about what the tables are confusing. Sorry, what? Uh, this one? Yeah. Uh, there's a file in your in the um, drive. Drive. Okay. You see this one? The Sakila MWB. MWB stands for my um, my SQL workbench. By the way, this file is only specific to workbench. I mean, it's yeah, don't, don't try to run out anything else. You just download this and uh, later on in the workbench, you just click on open model and then you just need to select the file. By the way, do you all have a copy of the file? I mean, that, that file is not important. I mean, it's just basically for me to in, hopefully inject some interest because I think just looking at the uh, this at this screen currently at the point of time is not very appealing. So just to like, see what like, Wow. Yeah. I guess let's. Who else is still having problems? Um, if worst case scenario, you all cannot get your um, workbench out and running. I can see a few dollars out here. I'm still annoying. Uh, worst come to worst, uh, just you know, share with your you know. Um, I mean, because the exercises, uh, at least for the first half, is more will be all like a, a group work kind of stuff. So with that, can I proceed on to the next session? Awesome. Okay. So the next session that I'm going to talk about 
is uh, what they call um, entity relationship modeling. Uh, in some ways, entity relationship modeling, I believe every single one of you already know what it is. It's just that you may not realize it. Uh, because the way in which humans think about data is pretty much an objectified kind of a view, right? Like for instance, if you take a look at your phone book, first thing that you see is, oh, okay, you know, different categories. You have a phone book of your classmates, your phone books of your ex-boyfriends, your phone books of your, your colleagues, and stuff. stuff. So, um, the, term, the terminology entity relationship modeling is just more like a way to formally state out what it is so that you all can be more aware of what you already know and uh, later on when you do your database design uh, it can come, hopefully it can come a little bit more naturally so the first step to by the way this is like a theory on how to you know, start designing your database and toying around with it um, yeah so the, the first step is to organize let, let's say assume that you actually have a lot of data you know, and I really care about database right now but if you want to store it, or if you want to you know, record down everything in a single database, um, first of all, you need to figure out how, what are the different things involved and how they are related to one another. So, um, yeah, the first step is usually to give some structure. And uh, under the um, DBMS uh, theory, so to say, there's actually three things that you need to think about. One is entity, uh, which essentially uh, pretty much means the objects that need to be represented in the database, for instance. Class, okay, this can be entity, teacher, entity, students, entity. Um, and usually, uh, how you, let's say if you are given a problem statements by your boss or whatever, trying to convert this whole bunch of data to a database, if there's a statement that describes your problems, usually the nouns will form the entity. By the way, nouns in English terms means, I have no idea to but anyways, you can be. Yeah, and um, yeah, then there will be relationships and there will be attributes, details of work to it later. But essentially what the algorithm does is that, you know, it's actually a graphical approach to database design. So just not the SQL bench, you know, the classic table that you see that's not. Those are examples of the uh, diagrams in practice, right? I mean, if you think about the kind of, uh, if, if you think about those, okay, these are, I can say for sure, because I work in the industry, but whenever we design database, this kind of stuff, we don't show them codes, we show them diagrams. And that ER diagram is the kind of diagram that you need to work it out um, whenever you are tasked with either designing or understanding the database. So, um, yeah, like just like what I mentioned, entity type is a collection of objects that share a common definition. Boring, but um, yeah. And the entity is a person, it's like an instance, if you know what instance means, it's like a physical manifestation. Like for instance, entity type can be natural, entity me, you know, well, not me as a me, but my name is Jeffy. Um, and each and, each and every one of you are an instance of a student. So, as an example, um, you might just read through a very short paragraph of example. You can read from the most. I think it's clear on them. Okay, can anyone tell me what are the entity types that you can recognize from the short simple statements? Anyone? Don't have to raise your hand, just shout out. Silence. Sorry? Okay. Awesome. Department, that's one. Okay, division, that's two. Anything else? Sorry? Uh, company, yeah, I mean, if you have that, if you are thinking of expanding your company and you're trying to, you know, have a merger and acquisition and eat over other companies, yeah, you can have that. Anything else? Uh, will McKenzie fall, fall under the category of entity type or entity? Yeah. So, if you want to generalize, I can see how we do that. Go, go, go. Yeah, well, I mean, there are several names for it. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, uh, there are several ways you can actually name it. Uh, you can name it like employee or something like that. So these are like you know intrinsic noun terms that you know when you have a problem statements. You know, Mackenzie is uh, just a name. It's an instance of an actual person who performs a particular role in this example, which is uh, yeah, you can call it employee or something. But anyways, uh, so now you have listed down company, uh, department, division, employee, and uh, each one of these entity will almost always exist as a table in a database. Now before I move forward, um, I hope all of you understand what I mean by the word table in a database. Does anybody, uh, is anyone not clear on what it means? Okay, uh, the table, you know, let me see whether I can phrase it properly. In the Excel spreadsheet that I showed you, uh, you see several individual tabs, right? Each tab will represent what kind of entity, access, films. So you can liken each tab as a table. That means a table is just like a matrix of rows and columns. The columns are the attributes and the rows with the individual items or the individual instances of the entity. Okay, it's a it's a DBMS term, so um, yeah. It's not physical. That's the way you guys are <laughs> Okay, so that's entity. Any confusion over what an entity is? Awesome. Next, relationship. We're not talking about BGR right here. We are talking about how each table relates to one another. Well, in fact, you mean. Okay, actually, I wanted to ask questions, but. I was preparing this slide and there's no time to add fancy animation, so we're going to just download it from here. You can really see the relationship on here. Uh, the relationship is an association between entity types, um, and it is under the ER, it is usually associated with a verb. So, um, okay, even though I did not go into. Hello, one, two, three, testing. Mic is not working. Thank you. Uh, don't worry, I'll still carry on. Um, I'll just need to project my voice louder, and uh, for the for the more sensible students, maybe later I can see some water down here. I'm, I'm just kidding. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I can talk. Uh, so you can see this diagram down here. Um, I did not really go into it in detail, but this is an example of a formal graphical representation on paper. Okay, why I didn't want to show it because the ER diagram you're gonna see in the workbench is gonna be slightly different. But I just put it here to let you see the uh, how we actually depict graphically the relationship between the uh, the entities when you were to design your database. So just like you mentioned division department employee, okay? So relationship will usually exist as um, a verb term to uh, relate the entities together. Like for instance, an employee can manage a department. Pretty straightforward. Um, a division can contain a department. Also pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, why why we need this kind of relationship is uh, because later on we will need to determine or how to decide how to link the different tables in the uh, database together. And uh, one of the things that we need to take note of is uh, what is known as cardinality. Okay, cardinality. Now, um, the word might seem a little bit intimidating, but in fact, it is just a some sort of say like a, okay, I don't know what way to describe it. It's just to say how many of one entity type is related to how many of the other entity type. And why this is important is uh, because this will um, affect later on whether or not the relationship will also materialize as separate tables in your database. Okay? So, for cardinality, the uh, exact definition, yeah, it defines the maximum number of entities, blah, 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 blah. Okay, ignore that. Um, there's a one to one, one to many, and many to many. So, can anybody make a guess of what these individual terms mean? Okay, one to one. 
Can anybody give me an example? You raise your hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that works in most cases. <laughs> but yes, that's a good example. Good. What about uh, one to many? Yes. Okay, a boss can have many fellow colleagues. A boss can have many fellow True in most cases. So that's a good example. Uh, there are exceptions. Like for instance, in my own company, I report to two person, so I can have two bosses. But yeah, I mean, it, it depends, it depends. Okay, that, that's correct. <laughs> that's accurate. So yeah, awesome. I mean, the, the, name, the name already implies the kind of uh, you know, relationship that you have. So um, yeah, for most cases, I will agree with you. So I can know how, uh, your name please. Ah! Yes. So yeah, that's what it is. Spoil again. So that's what they say. Yeah, in terms of stage speaking, you gotta treat all your students or all your orders as pumpkins. And yeah, that's precisely what I did. And I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. So um, yeah. Uh, so these are the kind of uh, cardinality relationship that you can have between the different entities. <laughs> can you just maybe that signal there? <laughs> it seems to work when you're near, nearby. All right. Uh, right now, currently, I'm just talking theory. Uh, later on, you will see how these cardinality and relationship are being implemented in SQL and they are implemented by what we call um, primary keys, foreign keys constraint, which currently might sound foreign a little bit to you at the moment, but hopefully later I can correct that. So back to this diagram, you can see the numbers down here. So one to one means that the, uh, a department can have, both, uh, have one manager and one manager manages one department. Of course, again, there might be some exceptions, but not right now we're just talking generic keys. And same thing, the department can only be in one division, and one division can have seven departments. Something like that, right? So just to, yeah. Okay, so the last piece of the ER modeling um, will be the attributes. So basically, attributes are values associated with the uh, individual entities. Now, I'm going to inject a little bit of my SQL specific stuff down here because. Uh, Later on, when you, you know, start drawing your own ER diagrams, uh, you need to know what they are. But in general, an attribute is like, for instance, name, gender, address, uh, food preference, um, you know, uh, basically things that describes an entity. In addition to that, it can also be used to describe. Uh, it can also be used to describe relationship, um, relations, like. For instance, let's run that again. Just now I talk about managers. So let's say you want to capture uh, different kinds of roles, if you will. You know, a manager, a superintendent, a uh, just normal worker, uh, so and so forth. So that's where the relationship changes thing. Instead of managers, it becomes role, or uh, you, know, you play a role. And the role type, whether it's a manager, it's a superintendent, it's a worker, these are attributes associated with that role, right? And uh, why you see it's important later on is because uh, for some relationship, you will need to uh, create them as tables in your database, and uh, you need to assign a to them as well. So, uh, in most, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, have any one of you tried? You know, googling databases, you are the very prior coming up in this way. Thank you, nobody. <laughs> yeah, I was a student, I know that. Okay, uh, you, you find that under here, like, they won't say anything about the type of attribute, just give attribute as a generic term. Now, right now, I just want you to know that, uh, in particular for my SQL, uh, the, in addition to the attributes that you assign to the, uh, the entities, 
you will also need to assign an, uh, the attribute types to it. Um, this is more for you know, computer stuff because under the back end, they need to determine how to represent the, 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 the value in uh, ones and zeros and how much space to allocate to it. So you have things like um, you know, int, which stands for integer, and there's several variables. Tiny, small, int, but you don't have to check all these things. Most of the time, it's just int. Um, decimal, useful for representing things like cost, money. Like, for instance, if you want to create a database of a table which represents, say, maybe sales and the price, yeah, decimal will be a pretty good candidate because currency only has two decimal points anyway. Um, for those like uh, floats, is for more, it's, it's not floating on the water. Yeah. It's uh, just a key term for uh, a non integer. Meaning to say that, for instance, pipe chip or one four or something like This is an example of real, uh, sorry, a floating, a floating point number. And uh, then you have the standard, you know, date, date time, time stamp. Um, the next thing which usually people you know, would like to keep in the database would be, you know, characters text. So under my SQL, there will be like uh, V A R C H A R stands for variable character. Just say that you can have any length. But of course, for the more advanced one, if you really want to like optimize the space usage. Uh, then that's where you can sometimes specify the length of the character that you want to represent. Like for instance, um, I think if you want to create a table which stores people with their NRS number, you know that NRS number will go like 300 characters, right? You just want it at most 10 characters. Yeah, somewhere around there. So you might want to specify, let's say, character 10. Okay, so the the at the, the back and most of the same space. But if you do not want to care about all these things, then boom, back here. Okay, yeah, good to go. Don't have to worry. And last but last but not least is a wooden distinction true or false. Confused. Yeah. Uh, some other terms. Um, honestly speaking, last time when I was present, preparing these slides, I, I don't really know where to put this thing in. Um, because it's a little bit, how would I say, um, SQL specific. But yet, at the same time, if you do not know these terms, uh, it's, a, it's going to be a little bit challenging to try to draw the diagrams and so on. But now, just bear with me for a little bit and um, just, yeah, try to, yeah, understand what they are. So, in addition to just having attributes, in order to have you know, the constraints and the things, um, some attributes um, sometimes play a specific role in a table. The most important being the primary key. Okay? So primary key, one of the one of the, the, the best um, examples is your NRS number. See, everyone has a unique NRS number, everyone must have an IC number. And I do not need to learn if I just need to know your IC number, I'll be able to identify you. Okay? Can anyone tell me whether a name can be a primary key? Yes. So very good, because you can have people the same name. Uh, not necessarily. Like for instance, uh, your sometimes if you log into certain systems, you need to provide a username. Some systems will employee number. Sorry. Employee number. Employee number can be a can be primary key. It's a good example. And uh, yeah, and it sometimes it may not necessarily be a number. It can be like okay, like NRC. NRC is yes, a front character and back character as well. So. It can be a combination as you can As long as it fulfills the criteria of being unique and identifiable and not now both can be a primary key. Every table, okay, it's not necessary that every table must have one, but if you design a database, most of the time I would recommend to have at least one um, field to be used as a primary key for um, ease of identification later. Okay? And uh, some other attributes, constraints like not now, which basically means that this value cannot be now. Uh, unique. Um, yeah. Oh, anyway, funny thing. Um, back to the primary key, just not about the series. If you have to Google my name, I think I'll set up my picture, another fat guy will use my account. So. so that's why my name can be used as a. Uh, yeah. That's why name cannot be used as a primary key. Yeah, I, 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 I Google myself. So. <laughs> Right, um, yeah, um, auto increments, uh, 
you don't need to worry about that right now. It's uh, usually used for numerical ID. It just means that if you insert one record, the next, it will automatically increase by itself. So as to ensure that it is a, uh, it is a uh, unique. And uh, okay, this this thing this thing is gonna be a little bit interesting. Foreign key, okay. Uh, so let's see whether I can give an example off the top of my head. Uh, let's say for instance, uh, sales. Okay, a sales table. Sales table will be made by a person, and uh, it will also be okay. Let's say it will be made by a person. Okay. So obviously, in sales table, you need to have a reference to say which person make that sales. So in the sales table, you will have one column which says employee ID or something like that. It is actually not the ID of the sales, but it's actually referring to the ID of the person making that sales. And then the prime candidate for what is called a foreign key, because it is a key that is referenced to a, a different table for a key. Now, with all the boring things out of the way, let's try a sample diagram. Okay, can everyone just open up your SQL uh, bench? I'm gonna sit down. Okay, so how do you draw an SQL? Okay, let's try this thing. Uh, can y'all see? Okay, awesome. So how do y'all create an ER diagram using this uh, my SQL workbench? Uh, it's pretty much quite simple. Um, you just need to click on add diagram. And it will give you this nice, okay, it's not very nice at the moment. It's just like an empty canvas, okay? So, um, yeah. Okay, so the example is, uh, yeah, it's my fix. Obviously, it's a report from Netflix. Um, it's a business entity that rents out movies to its members and its store records. And only that now it wants to move to an RDBNS. So, uh, the steps are as involved. I think number one, we're going to just on the example. First, to identify the entities and determine the relationships among them. Uh, so, it's um, giving them appropriate names so that they can be easily understood. Uh, three, the relationships should connect the entities, and four, each attributes should have a unique name as well. Okay, that yeah, well, because it's pretty obvious. So, given this example, okay, um, some of the, uh, the, the, the tables might have, I will want to create these tables. Okay, if you double click, this thing will come out and you can just type in the name of the year. So let's say this is a rental one, it has members, for instance. Okay, so you might have number down here. Tell what, I'm just going to do. Um, I'm just going to go without mic for the moment. Um, hopefully y'all can hear me. If not, can just follow what is actually on the screen right now. So right now what I'm doing is effectively I'm typing out the different entities. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me just put it just first. Okay, so pretty much you have members and movies. Okay, members want to rent movie. And uh, just now I mentioned about cardinality, where one member can rent out several movies and uh, several, one movie can be rented by several members at different points of time. So under the end to end kind of a scenario, what usually happens is that the relationship itself will usually exist as a table too. Okay, so that's why I create a separate table which currently I call it rental. And you're gonna have these three, three entries down here. Okay, so I've got the entity, members and movies. I've got the relationship which uh, manifests itself as a, uh, a table, which I call it rental. The next thing that I will need to do is I'll need to give them attributes. So what are some of the attributes? For instance, member, you will have things like member ID. Okay, and uh, member ID, let's say I want it to be, uh, because it's gonna be uniquely identifying each member. So you see down here at the column, PK, for those who play online games, uh, PK doesn't mean that you, know, you kill that person. Okay? 
key. It stands for primary key. Thanks. Yeah, primary key, not now you make binary and all this is auto increments and G are also not for this. But if you hold around, you can tell you what it is. So you don't worry about it that much. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to carry on typing. Uh, I have answer now here because I don't want to think at this point of time. But hopefully, you all can see that when I do uh, what kind of thought processes that goes into creating the, uh, the entities. Uh, okay. Well, actually, if you refer to your slides, the answer is just in the next slide. But oh, okay. I just want you to see the actual process. That means you'll never read the slide before coming here. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Is it possible to import the column from one table to another table? Like what, copy and paste? Yeah, like just directly copy and paste. Uh, let's try not to do that. Right? <laughs> have to deal with that one. Yeah, because, okay, um, actually this is already sh shortening the thing because by right usually we will type SQL statements to create such tables. But it's obviously more difficult to do that, so we just do it this way. But whether or not you can copy and paste depends on this um, workbench. Huh? Personally, I never tried using that. So you can go ahead and try. If it works, let me know. It works? You have to tell the class how to do it? <laughs> Just directly regulate at the copy paste. You can use the copy paste from one table to another table. Awesome. Very good thing, huh? So, this is what I want to see, man. Come on. Is that what she said? She said you can copy and paste the uh, few from one to another, from one table to another table. She had no idea of it. Huh? Copy and paste. Anyways, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm just too used to typing it out myself. Um, anyways, so by the end of this, you should get something like that. Right? There's three uh, just three tables uh, two representing the entity and one representing the relationship. Now, just now, the previous slide, have you, have you all girls got this ready? Okay, I'm gonna give you all like a couple more minutes. Oh man. Okay, let me just find out that I don't know who she's not supposed to be. Oh, don't, don't worry too much about the tech yet. Oh, okay. 
uh, except for the IDs. IDs make sure they are individual because later I'm going to teach you how to create uh, what we call the foreign keys constraints and uh, the key obviously must be matched. So things like member ID, movie ID, uh, just make sure that they are individual. The rest just randomly to something. Excuse me.
Okay, you just need to highlight the uh, because you're going to connect. Um, take notes for rental. The member ID and the movie ID will later on be designated as foreign key because member ID does not really belong to the rental. It actually belongs to the ID of the uh, the member itself. Okay, so you just start by clicking on the numbers and uh, yeah. boom. You link it to the member ID of members and the arrow will come out. Can I ask? Uh, yes. It's particular to which one you press first and then press second? Uh, yeah, correct. The first one that you press must be the, uh, the, the, must be the rental one. I can't recall what the terminal is. So is it like parent-child thing? It's a bit like parent-child. So the first one you click is which one? Child. Child, correct. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, because the thing is that many-to-many -many relationship uh, in database, you will meet an intermediate uh, table which will be the relationship that will store the many to one relationship. Okay, so how you read this thing off? This triangle thing right here is actually the many, and this is the one. So one member can have several rentals, and uh, one movies can also have several rentals and by transitivity one member can, have, can rent several movies and one movie can be rented by several members so that's how the end to that relationship um, gets set up yeah sorry, just click on the child you click on the child first, then you click on the parent actually does it, I think just remember the child access because like for example you can do, I mean like for example you are employed right? so Uh, yeah, which is why I was really hesitant when I said uh, <laughs> If it helps, then you can put it that way, but in actuality, you are right in the sense that it's not really actually parent child. It's more like, you know, um, I'm just not too sure how to explain it in English. Um, let me attempt again now. There's a term that's sitting here. Okay, I guess, I guess in a way, you can view this term reference the columns as a clue. Okay, because okay, member ID. Who does member ID belong to? Definitely belongs to member, right? Okay, so the member ID in the member cannot be the reference term column, but rather the member ID in the rental one. This is a reference term. Yeah, I have a the column. So when you click first, it's always click uh, member ID, then followed by member ID. Movie ID, followed by movie. I think that will be easier to, easier to you know, visualize which order to click. I'm sorry, because sometimes it's just me, it's just click, 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 click. So to give it actual terminology, sometimes it's a good channel. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, so, what was your question again? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, the rental, you know, the one that you are for example, in rental, right, you are member ID is referenced on member status. Because the member status one is defined everything. No, actually, the rental, you know, that column member ID is referencing the one in the members and referencing the one in the movies. Oh. So, it is referencing that, that, that this is the reference term. So the country is creating a relationship between these three tables, right? Yeah, correct. So, okay, the end to end is from here to here. This is the end to end. Okay? It's uh, one, it's, uh, one to end. Yeah, one to end. One to end. That, that's, how, that's how, because the thing is that end to end cannot be achieved in database without the existence of an intermediate um, re um, relation. So which is why whenever you say that okay, if you take a, if you see the relation, it's an end-to-end -end relation, then that relation will manifest itself as an actual table down here. And between that relation to the entity that it's referring to would be uh, one to end, one to end. Uh, what is the difference between the first one to one and the second one to one? I think if one is the, uh, uh, what is the yeah, there, there are two one-to-one. -one. Yeah, the first 
Oh, is that? Okay, actually, that's a very interesting question. Um, honestly, to tell the truth, I don't actually use it. Uh, but you can use it. You can use the. You don't. I, I don't think you need to use the other one because the other one is a little bit like not identified. I have no idea what that means. The one that you're using more often will be you know, the 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 story line, which essentially is literally you know having the uh, the one to one identification. Let me see the ID itself. I'm not too sure whether I'm making sense at this point of time, but um, hopefully later on, um, when you try out some examples, uh, you'll be able to better appreciate these concepts. Right now, I mean, if I were in your shoe, and somebody tell me this kind of concept, I would not be that common now. Uh, but later on, when you see examples, uh, hopefully you'll get something, a little bit of sense out of it. Um, let's see. Can I have a better example? Okay, then later when we move to the Sakura database, there will be some examples, and I'll try my best to refer them back to this kind of concept so that they can better appreciate what it is. Right now, you just have to uh, be aware of the relationship. You don't have to be so overly clear on the actual mechanics of thinking which table to which table they are going to talk about it later. Actually, I just got a quick idea. So because mental data, they are taking the following member ID, the member ID for the rentals table is a reference to one. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, you mean what symbol? This symbol? Yeah. Because like, for example, if you actually do this for work, right? Yeah. Then you draw wrong, you just you don't even know what you need, so you just need to know. Well, this the this thing is only specific to uh, my SQL workbench. Okay. Um, if you draw it out in the actual library in the workplace, uh, you just need to do this and it should be understandable. Okay. So uh, in fact, yeah, I don't have a right now I'm just saying one to one out here. Okay? Okay, please don't take this literally at this point of time. Just now over there those arrows, if you're gonna break it down into M to M, right? Even between these two relationships, there will be one, uh, one to M, one to M. Okay, that's what I spent my previous library. Yeah, I should have brought that up. That's multi-division structure. Uh, sorry? That's multi-division structure. Uh, define multi-division. That company's uh, structure is Mul uh, multi-division. Multi-division. That is one to M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, uh, one thing which I want to clarify is that let's say for instance something like this, one to M, contains do not necessarily need to be a table. Why? Because contains will most likely be appearing as an ID department. So the department will have, uh, let's say, division ID, and that will be the reference column. Okay, and that column, we respect the department will be the front, will be the front key. Is easier to work with because of the time. Anyways, back to this. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's. Yeah, question? Yeah, 
because uh, currently it's actually only one. Yeah, you'll be able to uh, let me see the Yeah, the foreign key should not be other than the foreign key should not be other than the Okay, because you know, by the way, that you uh, find it, you see that the number of the number is here. Yes, uh... Why is the first time I use this one? I use this one, the second time I use this one. So the second time is correct. Right. Yes. Why do you want to be so? 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, with that, the time now is twelve o eight. We are running late by eight minutes. Um, I guess the lunch time is one hour, right? Uh, in that case, we will be sure that uh, we will come back at um, uh, We will come back at one ten, and I uh, will give you all like twenty minutes to you know just draw. It doesn't matter if you run wrong. I just want you all to have the experience of you know going through designing a software program. Okay. Questions and comments. Very good. Awesome. All right, that's all for the morning session. Thank you, everybody. One, two, three, four, five. Thirty-five and above. Five, four, six, seven. All right. So more towards the um, older than thirty-five and around like a few between um, twenty and one twenty. Okay. Uh, answers kind of lesson. What? <laughs> I'm talking about this thing though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, what well, we need? No, I think uh, No, is it okay really? Can I start start off? Yes, yeah. start. Okay. Uh let's download the uh I don't think they can upload. They can, but some already up, some already already upload their answers like airplane. Oh, okay. Okay, which which group has finished problem number one? Raise your hand, please. Yeah. Okay, can you all come up in front and uh, hand over the mic to you? Please present your answers. Uh, for those who have not finished, please compare the answers with what you have. I won't have time to run through each and every team, so hope you guys can understand that. Okay. But I just meant this to be more of a sharing session and uh, even people who are doing questions on the Zoom and on the tree, please feel free to participate and comment and um, you know yeah, just give comments and be friendly, yeah? You so can we have the first you have a PhD Rock girls, rock girls. Yeah. Or, or music. Rock girls. Yeah. SPR, uh, PDF. Okay, PDF for you. Yeah. It's a little so small. It's, can I just open the project? Yeah, I'm downloading it. Right oh. So once I've downloaded it, mm, and I can zoom in. It's so small. Okay. All right. Uh, you might want to see out the question, the question again. Yeah. Okay, uh, so our group did the uh, number one questions about problem one, which is a music database. So if you have the notes with you, I think you can still look at the description of the problems. So basically, it's trying to say that there's a music store, like uh, some database stores, which stores this kind of like specific music collection. So what it means is that there are, there are in the collection, there are albums, there are artists, and there, is, there are the tracks. So uh, it's describing, the, it's describing the, like, the relationship between this three, uh, three, and the, the, the three items. So, and then, so in the requirement, it has described uh, what specifically is the relationship between them. So uh, it's saying that there are albums and one album is made of uh, is made by exactly one artist, but an artist made one or more albums. So then it's, it's indicating it's one to many relationship, right? So then it's for uh, for for artist artist is the parent and album is actually the child. So and then uh, if we look at the if you look at number four and onwards, so it's saying an album contains one or more tracks. Uh, that means it's indicating it's one to many relationships of him, right? So uh, one album is the parent and the tracks are the child. So uh, there, the rest of that we're saying oh, it's having a name and for each track. Uh, so 
so the same ones, the, the each track have a time length, which is measured by seconds. And when the when a track is uh, displayed, so you need to record down when does the when does this track begin began. This should be recorded. And um, so as well as the number of times music uh, by artists, I think. Okay. So uh, with those kind of like requirements, I'll get to uh, uh, the work that we have done. So, so right. So um, basically, we we create uh, three identity types. So one is the track and the album and the artist. So uh, as what we found, so we, we put in the artist in the artist. We put in specifically an ID so that uh, it will be more identifiable instead of using name, which is sometimes having some problem. So that's why we put the artist ID and we put the artist name. And and then the album, album and the type. So we put the album ID, album name, and uh, specifically we put an artist, artist name, which is, I think, um, it's kind of discussed, uh, it's optional, but we put it there. And then for the track, so we also put an ID, we put a name, and uh, because it's required by the requirement, so that's why we put the uh, time length, and, uh, and also the, we have a start head as required. And uh, on its top, so we put an al album name as well. And uh, yeah, I think one item probably, uh, we can also consider putting the number of times that the music get played, uh, which, yeah, I think it's also possible to do that. Uh, so basically, that's our work. So as I said just now, so uh, from artist to album is one to many, and from album to track is one to many as well. So that's pretty much our work. Yeah. Any questions, concerns, disagreement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Between album and artist, mm -hmm. uh, the table album is referencing the artist ID or artist name. Uh, so because we are okay, so you want to know like which are the column, which are the items. So we use the artist ID. So uh, we are okay, right? Um, yeah, right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. So uh, I, I think yeah. So um, that's um, I think this presentation is for everyone to learn, uh, even <laughs> from the mistakes. So <laughs> probably I think it's better if under here there should be an album ID and artist ID. And even I think there should be a, be a track ID as well. So yeah, you're right, I think. So here should be track ID and this one should be album ID and then we can use this one to, uh, I think the, the relationship between these two should be album ID to uh, as the one that we showed last time. Yeah, so I think, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So any other disagreements? Yeah. I think there is uh, also uh, data time, the start time, maybe it's not the bar chart, should be like... All oh, right, step. right, I think, yeah, yeah. Time yeah, that's right, actually, that's right. Mm -hmm. Probably, we, yeah, we should have, like, changed the data time for me better. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, so, any other thing that you spot that should be changed or enhanced? I have one question. Um, so the names, uh, I kind of noticed that they are outside the name. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, okay. So if I'm not wrong, actually, I, cause actually here we put the wrong name, that's why. The very name should be the album ID, but I, so that's why we choose the integer. No, uh, um, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so a bit messed up. Hopefully, it's a. No worries, no worries. Yeah. Okay, uh, plus any other questions or comments or things that you want to point out? No, in fact, I can see that. Um, before that, let's call people around the floor. Very good. Um, yeah, aside from the minor stuff, uh, in fact, I can see that um, the identification of the entities and uh, the kind of relationship between them might be pretty well thought out. Um, perhaps just a couple of minor stuff, like for instance, instead of using the artist name, should have used the artist ID, and instead of the album name, should use the album ID and a good spot down there about the, uh, the start time, which I also didn't notice. But aside from that, the um, attributes, the entities, and the intention that she wants to relate to the entities are actually correct. 
So if you do actually create a table for this, I think this would be a, 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 a relatively um, decent schema um, to be used, which can be used uh, in the actual database system. Okay? Okay, so very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, like what? Hold on, can you read the question again? Collection constant elbows. Oh yeah. Okay, uh, yes, that is correct. You spotted something. Again, this shows that I was an error question. <laughs> well, that's good observation, okay. Okay, um, in addition to just these three entities, there could also be an additional one, which is called collection. All right, and a collection can actually be a, uh, well, back to just now, the, uh, the, the parent child relationship to be a, it, uh, it's like a parent of the album. It's why? Because, and then what's the screen? Uh, okay. Because the collection is comes from the album. But what you can actually look out for is that um, the collection is actually not really so much related to the artist, so there doesn't necessarily need to have a, uh, a relationship between the collection and artist. So these two can be separate, but yes, I agree. Collections are what there should be a relationship. Yep. Meaning to say, uh, in the albums, there could be one additional column to say collection ID or something like that. And get it back. So, very good for that then. What's your name? Please introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, nice. Bad. Okay, awesome. Uh, the second problem is university database. So, from your site. Who has uploaded the answer? Yeah, I just do. Yeah, will it? No, it's okay. It means everything's working. <laughs> oh, damn. This, is, this never happens when I don't even do it. They don't like I don't know. Yeah, sorry, so which is the one that you... Which is the one that I'm supposed to um, download? This one? Oh. Hey, sorry. What the hell am I doing? Oh, okay. Hey, what happened? Uh? I thought just now I'm pointing to the correct one. Ah, oh, no wonder. Okay, this one. Okay. So, let me just download it. Okay, so can we invite the second summer from the second to the and describe the other one? Come on, don't be shy. Time to project of a nice voice in the class. Splat! Ah, don't worry. Do you want to be featured online? Yes. Okay. Huh? Sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. Um, okay, let me just recap the question for question two for the benefit of the other students. Um, question two is more like a university database whereby it stores details about university students' courses, the semester that the student took a particular course in, 
he's smart and great if you complete it and what degree program each student is enrolled in. Right, so over to you. Okay, um, hi. So over here, we start with um, logical breakdown, the university program first. So under the university program, we have a program ID, we have the program name, we have the total credits that's required to graduate and also the year comments. So the university program is like a, like your course, like for example you take business or computing, this, this is a program. Then from there, right, under each program there will be a course. So like for example if you take computing, right, you actually have like all the SQL course or like whatever, our course or, or like computer science. So this is considered a course. So course, right, they have, we also have a unique identifier, which is course ID. Then we have the course name, we have the credit point value. So for example, how much is the, I mean, like it's a true credit or four credit point. The year comments, and also the semester that is being offered. I think mean, there's one more that was offered. Um, okay, so, and, the pro and we link it back to the program ID also. Because each course needs to belong in one, into one program, right? So for example, I mean you take um, maybe SQL. SQL is under the under the computing program. So that's why we have a unique uh, we have a program ID there. So under the okay, then we also have another table which is student. So this table stores all the information of all the students, like the student ID and your the name of the student, the surname of the student, and also the date of birth of the student, and also the year enrolled, as well as the program that the student is enrolled in. So if for example each student is in, in business or programming uh, in computing or something. Then lastly, there's another table which is courses completed. So this table, right, um, stores all the information of, like for example, the student completed what course at what year and at the year that the, in the semester that the student took. Then um, you also have the grade and the marks of the table. So the unique thing about this table is actually that there is, if you notice, right, there is no key there's, a, there's no primary key actually for this table because you realize that, for example, each student, they will take, okay, for example, student A, right? He will take courses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then for the grade of each course, also, there will be like um, 50, 20, or whatever, right? So for this table, there will be the student ID will be repeated. Yeah, and, um, and nothing here is so unique, uh, you can't take it as a unique identifier. Yeah. So that's the any questions? How do you connect to? Okay, connect this to program. Okay, um, so what happened is that okay, this okay. So in terms of connection, right? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, this one, first thing, the course, right, will be connected to the program ID by the program ID column. So the course needs to be slotted under a program. Then subsequently, um, the the student also needs to be slotted under a program. Because all students have to have a program, uh, yeah. So the students will be slotted under a program because all students will need to have a program. You cannot just go into school and then you don't know which faculty you are at. Um, then later, in terms of okay, the course is completed, right? You will be linked to the student ID because you, each course that is completed that has a grade, right? You have to have the student's name to it. So this courses completed, right? Will be linked to student ID. Then lastly, in terms of the course completed, right, we want to link it back to the course also. So, um, questions. so she will student ID if you're a program ID and the variable characters hundred, but for the other one it's program ID into this. What do you have your following? Oh. Sorry. Oh. That, that is correct. I will <laughs> change that to very good. <laughs> I will change it to um Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. Did you catch what you do, right? For VAR character, right? It means it's like an alpha numeric character, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, any character. But I'm just kind of curious since uh, the uh, data the attribute type for program ID just now, and program ID is not matching, then which is the field that actually creates the linkage of it? I'm just kind of curious. Mm -hmm. You know, when the linkage is being formed, um, the first prerequisite is that the foreign key must be of the same type. Oh, is it? 
Yeah. Otherwise, the program should be quite narrow. It will range it. I don't know. Can I? Can I? I'm not going to do it. Just give me a second. Got it. Yes. Yeah, because my um, your comments right for both the course and the university program is the same. As in like the column, if the column leaders are the same, right? For a course of your relative. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter because the thing is that the the, the column they belong to different uh, tables, so in essence they are of a different scope, so they should they should clash. The only problems you will have is. When you're writing a code like you cannot understand each other. That's one. That's one. And so is that uh, two columns the same thing with the same English. As we are in general won't allow that. Oh, you know. There's no way to represent. On the same table. The same table cannot see. Yeah, cannot see. Okay. Another course called Dynamic Uh, because I think inside the question you were saying that um, because each course can be offered across different semesters. So for example, this course can be offered in semester year, year like year 2016, then semester one, then 2017, semester two. Uh, this one is actually for students, this is student specific. So this table is um, about all the students' information. So for example, each student, for example, a student Rebecca completed um, this. So so this student Rebecca did this course at year when and did which semester did this Rebecca person do her course and what's her grade and what's her mark. So this is not linked to this one because this is an overview of. I mean, this information takes from takes from here. Sorry? The last table is just from the information is from the Some Yeah, it takes from analysis. So this is like a results table. Like because we are storing all the information, all the results of all the students. Then like for example, it cannot be that. I mean Rebecca takes this um, SQR class in year 2016 semester one. But then this class doesn't exist here. And it's a bit funny. So like this SQR class in 2016 semester one, right? It needs to be found inside here. So if there's an SQL class, but it's only in 2017 in semester one, then there's something wrong. <laughs> so like this student is not taking, as in, this class must exist in here. Yeah, but I think the question is, if you think about it like that, right? It's the semester class, but the class here is this course, semester one, two, three. Because each course I need only has one rule. Oh, not as a primary key, right? Good point. Then I would. Uh, okay, actually, uh, don't worry. It's uh, there's no right or wrong to this answer. In fact, I'm kind of glad that you actually pointed out and I'm kind of glad that she actually did it that way. Okay, because if you want to think about this, it actually goes uh, deeper into the uh, database, uh, database design and what we call normalization. Okay, because the thing is that the aim of the database, of course, if you want to really be uh, anal about it and you want to normalize, you need to say no data gets uh, redundancy. You can do that. But if you want to perform queries, sometimes when the database when the database gets too large, it becomes a bit unwieldy. So database designers sometimes may want to re, uh, introduce a bit of redundancies. Uh, this is a form of redundancy which currently it may seem like a repetition information. But let's say for instance you are talking about a super large university, a global university, if you will, where you have millions of records and you don't want to do joint well, joints, which I'll talk a bit later, is pretty expensive. So that's where this kind of design will make sense. Okay, so it's not right or it's not wrong. It's just a matter of how you want to design it uh, according to the kind of data load that you're expecting. Mm. Yeah. This is good for lean or not? Sorry? Is it good for lean database or uh, 
for smallish database, uh, she will be right in the sense that uh, just based on the cost, we will be able to see the, the semester beginning information. But if you're talking about a huge database, then sometimes we will inject redundancy inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is to make the queries faster. Redundancy means like putting like this one? Yeah, yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. These are called redundancy. So uh, it's good. If you go in Google, it's known as a normalization. Mm -hmm. So there's a first normal, second normal form, third normal form. Any other comments, questions? Then in this case, right, do I put it as a primary key or just... No, you don't really need to because as long as your course completed as a course ID, which refers to the course down there, you'll be able to uh, uh, refer to the correct entry and uh, get the necessary information that you want. So you don't really need to define it as a key or what. Can I just clarify that the primary key needs to be a unique identifier? It cannot yes. be repeated at all, right? Uh, what do you mean by repeat? Like for example, if in this case it's a it's an identifier, it's an identifier, but it's not a, it's not unique. Uh, it has to be unique. Okay, yeah, it has to be unique. But one thing which you one thing which you mentioned, uh, plus so I can just go to my own shop. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually this is a very interesting design. Uh, actually, when she mentioned that the course completed, if you take a look, there's actually no ID that um, identifies the course uniquely. Okay? So, even though I mentioned about primary key, but one information which I kind of left out uh, is that a key will not necessarily be a single column. Okay? It can be a combination of columns. So, for this case, the course completed, as long as we have the student course ID combination, these two pieces of information can already uniquely identify which record we're talking about, and you can actually have a primary key that comprises the two of them together. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you to explain that and punish you one other question? So, um, I have a question in terms of how the actual data entry looks like, because in, in most schools, a certain number of courses can go over certain different programs, and so. If, how would like one course be like uh, MySQL 101, how would that data entry be put in to, to say that it's for both computer science and humanities or something else? Like how, how does that data entry come in? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, that would be is an end to end kind of relationship. Uh, I don't know, because we're always asking about end to end. So it'd be good for us to look for you to see end to end. <laughs> Well, for the, the current scenario that you pointed out, uh, unfortunately, it is not the question. So, which is why the way that she designed it is uh, one program to many courses. Okay? But you did mention an end-to-end -end relationship, which actually, if you take a look at it, it's actually student to course. Student to course is an end-to-end -end relationship. And by the way, it's not an end-to-end relationship. You cannot just have two tables. You need to, have, you need to create a third table to actually capture the information. And that's where the courses of the class All right? So, so for, to answer that question, you would have to have a second table between the university. Yes, correct. Right. Uh, it's just that it's the requirements, uh, the question, so it wasn't that way. Uh, one, one thing which uh, that's, uh, let me think. Oh, yeah. well, one thing which uh, I just want to bring up is that uh, it's also interesting to see that even though students can belong to a program and a student is also uh, linked to a course via a separate table, it does not necessarily mean that a student must take a course that belongs to the program that he is currently enrolled in. Okay? This design doesn't trigger for that, and in reality, it also does not impact the same Why? Because, let's say, for instance, I'm computer science, but I've taken you know, biology modules before. That's why biology courses before, under another program, but I'm not under that program. So, this captures that information. As in, this captures that flexibility in this kind of world. This does. That does. Alright? So, Okay, now last, can I have uh, who has completed question or two? Let me just download the thing first. Sorry, which one is your uh, question three? Question three. Is that? Yeah. Oh uh, crap.
Let me start. Oh, okay, for this question, it was about airplanes. Yeah, the question is on here. Okay, so the airplane is one or more airplanes. The airline is one or more airplanes. And uh, the airplane is a model number, a unique registration number, and a capacity. And I'm just sit down. <laughs> and uh, there's a flight, the flight has a unique flight number, and it departs from an airport, arrives in an airport. And then there's a date and time, blah blah blah. Each flight is carried out by an airplane. I think everybody knows this shit. So. Anyway, so we decided to go with uh, well, a, uh, air, a flight centric thingy. So, like, we imagine like if we had a table which you could look at, it would be like flight, then the flight ID, and this flight has which what airplane. So it goes out to the airplane ID and this flight belongs to what airline? So it goes to the airline. And this flight has what passenger? So we got the passenger IDs and then the, the flight the, the flight actual details. So if we go out to the airplane, then we can have the airplane's ID, registration number, the airplane's model, the capacity. Uh, we were thinking about the capacity whether the capacity is determined by the flight or the airplane, but we imagine that, uh, like, if the airplane has a capacity of two hundred, then and this airplane is flying this flight, so then thus the flight would have the capacity of the airplane. So the capacity of the flight is derived from the airplane, and then there's a flight ID, which is this airplane will have a flight ID, which is this flight, and the passenger. <laughs> so boring. The passenger <laughs> ID comes from this guy, from and he got his name, surname, email, blah blah blah. I don't know. Am I supposed to be telling like this? Or? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I I think it makes sense this way. So they, it's just it's from the flight. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything left to explain? I don't know. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, the relationship between airplane and flight like, be the other way around because a single airplane can go on many flights. And in that case, the flight will have multiple flights. The a single airplane can go on multiple flights. Yep. Not really. What? Uh, like. <laughs> uh, the at this time, at uh, let's say now, one airplane can only go to one destination. So after the flight. Then he takes on a new flight ID. Yeah, but um, isn't. So isn't this just a list of all your airplanes and uh, and then instead you have your many different flights. So let's say this airplane is used for flight to Thailand, Australia, and Singapore at different times. And yeah. So those three flights are recorded in the flight database and they belong to the same airplane. Yeah, they will they will yeah, they will derive the the like this flight. So if you open up I think oh no, how do I get out of this? Yeah, let's get yeah, right. I think if you open up this flight table, then you have uh, for flight ID 1, ID 1 is flown by this airplane ID, and blah 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 blah. Then flight 2 could have the same airplane ID, because, and then different details. But then, under this table, then that single airplane will have multiple airplane ID. Under, under uh, flight? No, under airplane. Under multiple airplane? There should be multiple flight ID. There will be, yeah, you will have multiple flight IDs. Then won't that uh, won't the airplane ID be repeated multiple times? No. Why would it be repeated? Am I guess I think wrong? Well, well, but I'm I'm new to this, so no I. Problem, no problem. I mean, uh, the, the, for all I know, I'm guys, no, 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 no worry, guys. The whole purpose is to clarify and help each other. Like, okay, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, couple mistakes now. Um, you brought up a very good point. Um, an airplane can have several flights. Each flight will only belong to one airplane. So it's a one to many relationship. Yeah. So under the columns in the flight table, it is correct because we have flight ID and airplane ID. But however, the airplane table, under that there's one flight ID which is a little bit more contentious. Why? Because one airplane ID can be associated with several flight IDs. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So if you have that one column down there, how are you going to keep the records? 
<laughs> so, and anyways, you've already got the flight to flight to the chest, and the airplane already do the same. Yeah. So you don't really need the airplane to do the same flight. Yeah. Well, that is so true, so... I'm going to do that. And I, there's no delete, I don't know how to use Windows. Function, yeah, function delete. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, right, 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 I think that's a delete, yeah, right. So now it's correct? Yeah. So now we can use this for actual flights. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody gets anywhere. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, why is there a passenger ID also in flight? What passenger? I imagine in the flight there you can see who's in the flight. <laughs> so you don't put the passenger inside the flight? Uh, okay, between passengers and flights, what kind of uh, what kind of cardinality relationship do you think you can? Uh, a passenger can have multiple flights, okay, right now, and uh, the other way not. Uh, I also I also consider that. But I don't think they can make a booking on the same day, right? Because sometimes they, they book it, they just book the tickets. But that way they can be less. Uh, when you're saying two tickets, you're referring to the same flight or the same flight? Same flight. So meaning to say a flight can also have multiple passengers. Uh, multiple instances of the same passengers. Multiple instances of the same passengers. That is treated as a separate thing. So meaning to say uh, a passenger can have several flights. And uh, each flight can have several passengers. Right? Several of the same passenger? Or? Because the flight is actually uh, something Also, oh, I should have like a, a table called booking. Yeah. Right. It should be mm. a separate table. Okay. Because it's an end to end relationship, and end to end relationship, not the bad. You need to have a separate table for the relationship. So you have a booking table. And uh, the second question which I have for you uh, is, that, is that a need? associate flights with um, airlines. It's not entirely wrong. I won't say that it's wrong. But I'm just... Uh, it looks nice on the table. <laughs> you see, <laughs> this flight is by what airline. <laughs> but yeah, but it's not. I don't think it's entirely necessary. Yeah. Because why? Because flight is uniquely uh, associated with the airplane and airplane. Please, okay, listen to that. Yeah. That, that, that's I mean, it's not necessarily wrong. Right? It's just uh, redundant information. Right. Why are you putting the airplane to Ireland as one to many relationships? Is it a one to many? Is it because of the dot? I still don't understand the... <laughs> so if I wanted to say one to one is... Uh, how do I do that? This one is it? But I cannot choose the... Well, it's not really one to one. One airline, you can have several airplanes. Right. Singapore Airlines, you have rescue 700 yeah, yeah. So one airline. Got number of airplanes, right? Then the airplane, airplane ID. Several airplanes, yeah, correct. Oh, so is that the question why there's an airline and there's an airplane? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the airline got multiple airplanes. So the reverse is the, the, the relationship is um, reversed for the case. Oh, yeah, the, the, this one is goes up to the air, yeah. airline. Right. Oh yeah, okay, okay, I get it, yeah. Okay. Is there a button to click and say reverse? Unfortunately, no, not really. Sorry? The relationship with Chester can be reversed. No, no, it is supposed to be reversed, but I'm just asking whether there's a button to help me reverse it. Unfortunately, I'm not. Edit relationship. Reverse, no have lah. Okay, nice. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, right. But anyways, not to worry, not to worry. Yeah. Um, I mean, any other questions before I say? No? No? Yes. Actually, so is there a quick, like, how did you delete it without deleting the actual comments from the server? Sorry? Yeah, so, uh, is there a way to delete the relationship without deleting the actual comments? Uh, yeah, right, there is a way. Right click, then delete. Don't think... Keep foreign key columns? I don't know if I have that option. Head, 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 head. I don't use Windows. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay, if not, then let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my turn.
to carry on. Right, so uh, hopefully all of you can see that uh, this kind of ER relationship, uh, there's not all the time just a right or wrong answer. It all pretty much depends on uh, what you want to use it for and the kind of workload that uh, you're doing. And I would like to thank the three students who come out and present. I would like to thank the rest of the class for raising such good questions. So let's move on to the next um, session, if I know how to use this. Uh, where are my notes? Da -da 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 -da. Download, download, download. Yeah, if you notice, this is not my laptop, right? so my speed is going to like go down. This is running right. Okay, awesome. Let's just let's wait. Let's close this. And let's close this as well. Good save. How do I make it full screen? Uh? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very comfortable with this. <sighs> what? Okay, I'm going to have a difficult time. All right, um, now let's move on to the last um, session of the day. Um, for this one, I will try to provide a little bit more hands-on and um, let you girls try out some examples as I go along. Okay, this morning we talked about the, the necessity of database. We talked about um, the concept of using ER diagrams to um, represent the key structure to your data. So the next and the final session will be to introduce to all of you the kind of language that we use to interact with the database. Okay? Um, it is not as sexy as, for instance, hey Siri, you know, um, you need to literally press in commands um, which follows a certain format um, in order to get data. So for most of the, uh, the relational databases, you actually have this language known as structured query language or SQL which I have been talking about, or at least say out for the last, for the entire morning. Uh, before that, can all of you just uh, load the, um, the Sakila database into your workbench? Now, how do you load it? Very simple. Um, okay, anyways. Okay, under here you just need to... Sorry. There's this button called open the script, is that like this one? Open the scripts, and there's actually a Sakila SQL uh, in the Google um, Drive. So just double click it. You find all these statements, don't worry about what it is. And uh, just click on the action, the lightning button. You got that? Okay, 
learns how to interpret how the data will interact with each other. But how will, how does the actual data, when we put that schema together, yes. now how would I enter data what does that look like when I'm entering data and putting that in? So Good that, question. I don't really know, I don't, I mean, yeah. like given data, I don't, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't oh, really make sense. Okay, um, the, uh, that's a very good question. She's asking, um, I mean, this entire morning I've been talking about your diagram relationship. So how does that actually translate to actual um, tables and entries in the database? So that's where this uh, next um, session will come in. Because later on I'm going to show you how to actually use my SQL bench to translate all these diagrams into actual executable statements. Create statements which will essentially create the tables to your database and uh, later on how to actually insert the values inside. Those will be covered uh, later when we go through the different uh, the syntax of the um, query language. So, sorry, just to clarify, if, let's just say hypothetically if I'm given a large database yep. or Excel or CSV, yep. will you show us how to import that CSV and then manipulate it into creating new tables? Or I, I'm just curious how this all relates to if I receive data how does that relate to the schema that you just shown and then relate to the search query? Okay, what we are talking about would be more, okay, first of all, I think the Excel spreadsheet has to be uh, formatted in a certain form, a certain way. Uh, if not, you might probably need to, okay, this one I can't be sure because I've never tried before, but I imagine that it would be so. Uh, you, might, some, you might sometimes need to save the individual tabs as a common separate the values, CSV text files. Okay, and if I'm not wrong, uh, my SQL should be smart enough to have this import function. I'm not too sure how it works yet, I have to it, but um, you go ahead and try it out to see how it actually works. But before the import function actually can work, you of course need to have the tables to be defined in the database itself. That's the first prerequisite. So you create the tables in your own? Yeah, correct. Separately from each one? Yeah. So, okay, just now when you open up the. Uh, let, 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 in this case, let me just give it a quick visual run through of uh, what actually happens when you load in that entire SQL statement. Let's have all the students load up the SQL statement. You all click on the lightning button. Okay, great. If you can see down here by the side, uh, yeah. Come back here. Uh, go to this one. Double click on this guy. Go to this page, double click on this guy, and it should, it should open the connection to this guy. Okay? And uh, one thing that I want you all to take note of is. Yeah, it's a little bit bloody small. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, you see these things, schemas? Right. Once you loaded the SQL statement down there, okay, and uh, for some of you, you might need to refresh, which is this um, circular button down here. You should be able to see this um, circular down here. All right. And uh, under here, you see the tables. You have actor, table, actress, sorry, address, category, city, country, customer, field, actor, category, text, blah blah blah, so and so forth. And you can think about it. Each of these separate tables. Uh, is actually corresponding to a tab in the Excel spreadsheet that I showed you this morning. Okay, I mean, we sort of structured this way so that you can see the difference. Satya, can you see it? Have
For those, please don't forget to click on the lightning button if you want to have a different video. Because I'm not going to
remember to make sure that your MySQL server is running. Uh, this means that in your XAMTT you know, control panel, the MySQL server number is green in color. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what I mean just now is uh, this uh, program down here. Your server must be green color and it must have a. Okay, PID means process ID. Basically, it just means that the server must be running. Otherwise, if the server is not running, what's going to happen is that your MySQL workbench, which essentially is just a dump front end, will not be able to do anything. Okay? So you can treat like your internet connection right? and you can treat the workbench like a browser. If you lost your internet connection in your browser, you just click to click, nothing will happen. Okay? It's the same concept. Okay? So um, uh, before referring to the slides, I just want to show a couple of stuff to you. Okay? So, uh, yeah, you, you can see that if you were to, let's say, select any tables, any table at all, you just right click and the very first option is select rows, okay? And uh, essentially it's issuing a query to the database and it will just show you the results down here. Okay, so this essentially is, uh, you can see that it's a little bit like your Excel spreadsheet already, okay? And uh, the second thing that you need to take note of is that when you do this kind of graphical clicks, okay, what my SQL workbench does for you is that it actually translates your action. Uh, later on, I'll show you how you translate the diagram into the structured query language um, syntax. So you can see down here, select all from Sakela customer, boom, everything will come out. All right. So that's actually how you query the um, the, the, the the database. And for the next session, I'm just going to go through the uh, the syntax. Uh, and some of the more commonly used commands and uh, demonstrate that to you real time on this computer as well. So, before I move on, who hasn't yet connected the database? The rest are small boy, yeah.
Now, most of the time, this kind of operation is done by separate scripts, um, which actually takes the entries from other sources and inserts them into the database. And it's usually not done by hand, I would say. But if you want to do by hand, also can. Huh? Uh, let's see whether there's a... Yeah, I suppose, um, sorry to answer your question, there is an import function, but uh, I have not tried it before, so I don't really know how it works. You can try it in the free time. That's what I can say. <laughs> okay, so can I move on? Sorry? For the imports? Uh, okay, under Sakila, down here, you just right click. And you can see this uh, table data import wizard. And uh, I believe it should be able to ask you to specify some, um, some files for you to import um, information in. But unfortunately, right now, as in exactly what is the format of the data file, I'm not too sure. I'm going to try it after this session. But rather, what I'm going to focus more on are the actual syntax and to how to actually um, use it and issue that uh, now that you've got all the data. That means is assuming that all the data are already in, how are you going to query? How are you going to uh, manipulate the data? And how are you going to get analytics of the, uh, the data in the database? All right. So, what exactly is structured query language? Just some non-interesting technical, theoretical stuff. Yeah, it's a standard language for RDBMS. What this basically means is that for those who are using any other SQL um, software, like for instance Postgres, um, NSSQL, SQLite, or uh, pretty much anything that has the word SQL inside, the syntax that you're going to learn now today will work on all of them. Okay, so you don't really have to worry about uh, whether you'll be supported or not. Um, so what structured query language is is that well, yeah, is a declarative query language which pretty much means that it is used to create database systems or whatnot. It can be used to define a database structure, so it's called a DDL, data definition language as well. And it allows you to query it or whatnot, so it is also known as a DML, or data manipulation language. And unfortunately, it's not DHL, anyways. Um, that's not really important, you don't really need to know this. You just need to know the syntax, good enough. Okay, so uh, we've talked a lot about tables. Uh, now I'm going to take one step back and uh, talk something a little bit about schema. Okay? If you can recall the examples that uh, one of the students wrote about just now, uh, the, um, the music records that's actually a collection, then the albums. So likewise, under the SQL databases, you have tables and on top of it, you have schemas. Okay? So you can view schema as a little bit like a collection of tables, if you will. Okay, it's just to help you organize things out properly. And of course, <coughs> sorry, that being said, uh, it is having this schema also allows the SQL server to provide some security features. Like for instance, you only specify, let's say, one user can only you know, access to one schema and I'm not going like, to use another schema, so on and so forth. Um, but of course, that is beyond the scope of this session, so I'm not going to talk about that. What I am going to talk about is basically just the idea that the schema is a collection of tables and uh, what is the, the syntax for creating them, right? So, to create a schema, uh, okay, let me think first. Okay, let me just digress a little bit. Um, does all of you still have the, uh, the window with the diagram that, that you draw just now? Anybody? This one. Okay, let me just open up a new model. Okay. 
go home. Let's say I want to choose any one of this. It doesn't matter whether I'm wrong. Yeah, back to this. Okay, so uh, why I want to use this software is because first of all it's graphical. I think if I just let you see code um, within five minutes, everyone will shut off. Um, but it's not just a fanciful front end color because it actually has this um, functionality to so called forward engineer this diagram into SQL language. So, how do you do so? Very simple. Um, you just need to go to file, export, and you go to the forward engineer SQL create scripts. For those who have a diagram, you can try on whatever signal that you have. You can just grab a few tables and do it on the spot. So what's going to happen is that, um, okay, just skip all these things and just click next. Click next. Oh, crap. Let's try again. Okay, so these are the SQL statements that are created from that diagram. Okay, you don't have to know all of that what it's talking about. But two of the important things that you have to take note of is can you see this? It actually has a statement to first create the schema. Okay, and this schema you will call it my DB. I think it's an automatically generated name, but then if you were to you know, specify a different name in the uh, the the, the graphical model itself, you have a different name. So that is the syntax create schema. Okay, if not exist, you don't worry about that. It's just to ensure that you know you don't double create the same schema you run this script multiple times. Okay, so by just having that, you will create a schema in which you can start to populate tables. Let me just show you. Okay. Okay, so this table, this this screen down here is for you to input in your your, your commands. Uh, let's say for instance, I want to create a schema called Golden Girls. Um, I just type something like this, and I will click on the. Uh, okay, you see that there's actually two lightning buttons. One is just a pure lightning, and the other one is lightning but with some sort of like carrots um, down here. Okay, this one just means that it executes the statement where your cursor is. Usually, I use that because you. Know, in my everyday usage, I will have a lot of commands up here for a shortcut. And I only want to execute one statement, so that's the one that I use. Okay, so once you create a thing, and then you refresh this thing, boom, and you see, ta, now you have a new schema called Morning Rose. But right now, currently, it's empty, so there's no table, nothing whatsoever. Okay, so aside from creating schema, if you want to do query, you need to go into the schema, and that's where the use. Commands come in. Oh, sorry, wrong spelling. Yeah, this is just a, a, a screen, it's not even a file. So you just control T for a new tab. Or you can clear the current tab, doesn't really matter. Okay. These are like, you know, browser web, the, the different tabs, it's a little bit like that. You can just imagine that in this. So, uh, yeah, for me to actually you know, jump around different schemas, okay, I just use the word use schema name and once you're in the schema name, then you can do all the funny things. Like for instance, uh, I'm actually jumping the gun forward a little bit. So if you all do not understand the syntax, please don't be alarmed because I'll cover that later on. But I just want to demonstrate some stuff, that's all.
Okay, uh, if I would type something like that. Oh my god. Okay, let me try that again. Huh? I put my cursor down here, I run this statement. You see that the next thing that comes out on the screen is an error. Okay? Why? Because I'm not physically the error coming in. It says error code blah blah blah, table does not exist. Why? Because I'm actually not in the correct schema. Tables is actually belonging to a schema called Sakila, but right now I'm actually coding those schema, which is take a look at the is important. Alright? So, but if I were to switch my schema, and same thing, I click on the lightning button with the carrot down here, you see that the bowling thing jumps, and if I were to run the same command, boom, it shows me all the results. Okay, so these are just some things that you can think of. Why? Because later on you start issuing queries. If you issue the same query but it doesn't work, then that could be one of the reasons why not. But that's just technicalities. Anyway, moving forward. So, schema creation is the same as a collection creation instrument. That basically just like creates a folder for you to put all your tables in. Oh, you mean the shorter button? Uh, good question. Uh, for schemas and table names, it's case sensitive. For column names, it's fast. Schema and table names are case sensitive, but column names are not case sensitive. Uh, you mean the auto like auto complete? I I know that it, it, I I know that it, uh, it, it exists for some, but not all. Let me just see what it was like. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think it has. Not all versions. Some versions have seen got some versions have. But if in doubt, there's always the navigator down here. Okay, you want to know which table it is? Just go to the top and say, boom, everything will come. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I'm here to teach you the concept of the shortcuts. So, too bad. Anyways, moving on. Okay, so. Um, we've talked about schema, let's go on to the tables. So, um, I, okay, if possible, you, uh, if possible, try to keep a screen of this thing on, because later on the queries that are going to back to this thing might be easier if you have the tables right in front of you to refer to. So let's say, for instance, if we have the following four tables, customers, see all the supplier, and um, by the way, this is the textual representation of a entity. <laughs> But it's the same as the graphic code, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. The first syntax that you need to know of are the create statements. Alright. Uh, back in the days when we don't have uh, the SQL workbench, we have to type all these things manually ourselves. So the syntax is um, I don't know whether you all can see. If you all can see on here, please refer to your notes. Um, the syntax is create table. Alright? and the name of the table. After that, you need to specify all the columns that you want. Uh, the, the, the thing that you need to know of is that for each of these columns, there's going to be a, a, a data type that you need to specify. This is like the one that I mentioned to you this morning, the attribute types. So order ID, integer, find integer, CN integer, date, date, blah, 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 so and so forth. Uh, and then after that, of course, you have keywords for things like, for instance, unique. You have keywords like foreign key. Now, this is the one that actually, you know, tells my SQL to draw uh, an edge from one table to another table. Okay? Like, for instance, there's a foreign key called customer ID. This is the foreign key. You can recall that's the one that I mentioned this morning. It references another table called customer, which is 
this bubble down here. And uh, this is the field, the foreign uh, key that it actually relates to. Okay? So this is the... Uh, can anybody tell me what is the commonality between customer and order? Yeah, can you think over here I'm sure there's a there's a relationship, but can anybody tell me what is the real commonality? I think is it one to many, one to one, many to many? Many to one. Okay, correct. So one customer, several others. Okay. So as you can see, these are all things you actually are not seeing it in the morning. Why? Because the um, world bench is actually you know like pull a some sort of like graphical um, thing over all this kind of um, syntax. But uh, if you're not too sure what's actually going on, now, okay, it'd be good of course if you know all this syntax. Uh, yeah, okay, the rest like on update cast on, please um, don't be too concerned about that. They are just additional information or additional constraints, which I think at this point of time you, know, you do not really need to know. But if you're interested, uh, you can drop me a mail or you can you know, Google it yourself. But I'm not to confuse the class, so let's just leave the other comments like cascade out. So this is the actual syntax for a process of creating a table. Okay? And just now when I asked you about the full engineer, okay, you all can realize that the statement that's created for each and every entity boxes is exactly the same kind of syntax as this. Right? So next time if your boss asks you to come up with a, uh, a database, you don't have to write all this thing. You just, oh, I just don't know, don't know, click on it, you can pop, go, you know, and you can press the hell out of it. Yeah, so, what? You all don't believe me, okay? Okay, so that's for creating tables. I'm not going to show you an actual example because I think I really showed the syntax. Uh, next will be once you've created the tables, you will need to do things like insertion of records, you will need to do things like updating, you know, replacing. So um, for inserting, the syntax will be something like this it's called the insert statement. Okay, so the syntax is very pretty simple. Insert into table values, and then you open and close the bracket, and all the all the entries inside each one of them will correspond to a column in that particular table. Okay, so let me demonstrate a little bit. I am not going to type, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. Again, that's why I like to use this kind of interface. As you can see, even though I type it like I would an Excel spreadsheet, but when I click apply, just now it will just you know translate the action into the SQL statement. I'm gonna copy and paste so you can see it clearer. Okay, so if I were to type something down here. Uh, and I click apply, that statement that you see is indeed an actual statement for um, for uh, inserting a statement into the oh, uh, into, into the SQL table. Okay, so insert into uh, the table name. One thing which is uh, I'm not sure it's such just now is that instead of specific, you want to specify to insert only a, a few columns because not all columns have the values. You can specify the column names. Okay, but of course the order of values must be the same as the column name. So under first name you will be Jeffrey and under last name Nicole. Okay? And uh, let me just revert this first so that you don't see it. And let me just run this line. Hold on. Okay. So when you run that you see that the, the log statement down here is one row factor in the one row has indeed been inserted, and if you want to see what actually happens, same thing with this. The resolution is a bit small. Okay. 
Can you all see the last entry down here? Okay. One question which you all must is, hey, how come I did not specify after ID? I did not specify the update. How come the you know, entry just automatically filled out? So if you can recall one of the front few slides, um, unfortunately right now because this machine I can't just refer back, there's an auto increment uh, option. For those that can refer to the attributes like you know, I've talked about primary key, non down unique. There's one particular that says auto increments. So this column down here, okay, is actually defined to be auto increments. So you need to say that add an entry without specifying the ID, it will just be one plus the previous external number. Okay? And uh, same thing usually for last update time, you will have a keyword to say that you will just you know um, you put in the time that you insert it automatically. So you don't specify that. But Aside from that, this is the command for inserting a uh, statement. Any questions? Uh, is it the case sensitive? Sorry? Uh, is the query a case sensitive? Uh, good question. The uh, schema name, the table name is case sensitive. The uh, oh. column names are not. So the insert create is not? Uh, no, 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 it's not. Oh, okay. Okay. The, the, the commands are not case sensitive. Huh? Okay, if you want to be funny and put like B I small N B S small E big R small T, go ahead, it will still work. Okay, you don't have to worry much. Okay, so that's for insertion. Next for modification. Last is one of them. By the way, you can. Uh, Okay, for correcting or updating a record, the syntax is update. Okay, uh, same thing. Sorry, excuse me. Is uh, update the table name, set the column to whatever new value. But one thing you need to think of, you need to specify which record you want to update. Okay, because if you don't specify, you may not know which record that you want to uh, modify. So that's where the where clause will come in. Okay, so it's to filter it to tell him, okay, I want to record, um, I want to amend customer uh, number eight and change the name to whatever it is to water table, whatever. Okay, and uh, same thing, uh, you can also do the same function in SQL Workbench by simply modifying it straight away. Let me find a good one. Okay, anybody like Mark Marble? By the way, just like in the previous screen, if I click apply, it will just apply it straight away. But I did not do that because I did not display your see the statements. Okay, so you can see it's exactly the same. Updates, um, table, set, first name equals to mark, where I actor ID equals to two. And when you click... Sorry? So this is the cost, right? Which cost? Yeah, uh, set Yeah, so the where is the cost to select the entry that you want to update, which is ID number two, this button. Okay? Take note, whatever that I type down here, I have not committed it to the screen. Oh, you should use it at the button table. Uh, yeah. Whatever that I type down here is not being updated to the server yet. It is only entries in the client you need to send the command to the server for it to register. So that's when you click apply. And uh, this is the uh, command that it uses. So once I click on apply, it's successful. Actually, you would add it under actor, right? Secure actor. Yeah, correct. You all can try the same exercises uh, as I go along so that you all can have a more feel uh, about how these things go. Uh, just one more thing that I want to mention is that uh, even though you see it says down here Sakila or Factor, because right now I'm already in the Sakila uh, I'm already in the Sakila schema, I actually don't need to specify this. I can just do this as well. It's the same thing. Sorry, I have another question. Yeah. So you under this uh mm -hmm. under this file. 
Just anywhere you just type control T is a is a tab actually. No, I I control T and create another another place. It's not um, oh. place. So uh, wait, I just then I create base and I create and like Yeah. Uh then you need the control T to that 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 area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, let me go to the rest. Let's try some examples. Of
Like this means that it is a value, a string value. String is like a text uh, value in computer science or in computing terms. So there is no difference between a single quote or double quotes. It all works the same way. Okay, this particular symbol is not mean, It's not indicating that it is a string. It's indicating that it's a few. Okay, it is, looks the same, but it's actually different. And it is only required when you have column names with space in it. But if you have column names without any space, it is actually optional. Okay, but why did it appear down here? Very simple, because I use SQL Workbench to auto-generate the statement for me. So when you auto-generate something, it wants to be safe, so everything you just put that code. Right? Right. Okay. So far, any questions with regards to insertion and updates? Sorry? Uh, how do you roll back? The, uh, yeah, the moment you call me to the server, that's it. It's down there. You cannot undo. You need to either delete or, you know, um, rewrite back all the statements. Yeah, but you raised a very interesting, interesting point. Uh, I'm not going to go into it today, but I'll just let you know that for SQL, there's a, a transactional based kind of uh, database. So there's this topic which you might somehow come across uh, later in the working life or whatever when you're dealing with EBMS. And 
that is the word commit. Alright? So what happens, this is more happening on the server and if you insert or modify statement and if the database is set to non-transaction mode, the changes have not actually been made to the actual server itself unless you issue the command says commit to say, okay, I literally want you to change the table. Otherwise, it just be like in a stage here. But uh, this one, by default, I think it's set to transaction mode. So any commands that you issue, it automatically gets updated to the database itself. And unfortunately, there is no control Z to undo it. So, yeah, it's going to be just it. Right? Okay, next will be... Okay, now, before I carry on, any more questions pertaining to this? Sorry, Sorry? Yeah, you mentioned that there are two different online transactions online. Uh, yeah, let me issue a pretty transaction mode or non transaction mode. So we should set it on non transaction mode? No, actually, I, I wouldn't really recommend non transaction mode because uh, whenever you are actually using an SQL database in production, uh, what, you're, what you're seeing is that you actually have you know, tons of other users accessing the same database at the same time. And most of the time, you want it to be transactional because you want every change that you make to the database to be uh, visible to the other users as well. Because otherwise, if you make changes by never commit, and another ch user make the same change to the same record and never commit, and then other when you submit the commit and then you submit the commit again, your changes will override these changes and you will be like, oh, yeah. you know. So, I guess, I guess my question is when sometimes you're analyzing things when you're Playing around with things, so that one, then should it, then in that case, you should have to decide the thing? Um, that should be fine because that is what I could read. It's not really uh, inserting or. It depends on what your role is, I guess. But most of the time, when you talk about the uh, database system, in fact, um, taking from personal experience, uh, I use database SQL on, on, on a daily basis, and I never have to issue any insertion. I never have to issue any update commands. Why? Because usually most of the time these kind of commands are already done in the codes that update the database. But what I do use it are for analytical purposes. So that's the select pause will come in. And select pause is essentially just querying the database without making any changes to it. I guess another assumption then is that once you're doing the
Okay, moving on. Uh, the next one will be the key thing because most of the time when you issue commands to the database, you will most likely be the select clause. Now, um, I don't know how many of you have tried writing um, select statements before. One. Anybody else? Two. Anybody else? Three. Or you also be raising one by one. Okay, never mind. Um, so basically, the, the general syntax looks a little bit like that. Select something from a table where uh, a bunch of conditions are being fulfilled. So what it actually means is that the select will allow you to specify the columns that you want. That for instance, you can select name if you want to see the name. Um, first name, last name, whatever. From will specify the table. It can be more than one tables, but we'll come to that later. Um, where is you actually use conditions to filter the record that you want to see. For instance, you want to see, uh, let's say, everybody who's under the age of 17. Okay, you can specify that as a constraint in the where clause. Uh, group by is more for like, you know, grouping records together as a name and all that sort of thing. Okay? Uh, you won't be able to see much down here, but I'll try to run through the examples. And uh, at the same time, I also want to try that out on Sakima database that you have inside. So, first thing, select. Just now, I think I've done a lot of select things before, right? And uh, but just one thing that you want to think of is that the asterisk is like a wrong card. So, maybe say asterisk just is a shortcut way to say I want to see all columns. So, even just now, the first few uh, examples that I show, uh, you should have seen that quite clearly already, hopefully. Let's see. Select. Or from Actor. Okay. So this shows everything. No filtering, nothing whatsoever. Now, if I only want to see the first name, same thing. I just type in the uh, the column name, and boom, only the first name comes out. Okay. So, uh, let's be fanciful and try a little bit more. Um, I'm going to jump ahead of the slides a little bit. So let's say you want to find out which are the actors that have the first name called Jennifer. Okay, so that's where the where clause comes in. See, it comes out to me the uh, uh, records down here. But the where clause, where column equals to a value, that is the most basic uh, syntax that you need to know of. But of course, that being said, there's actually a ton of other options that um, you can actually use. Uh, like for instance, okay, this I'm going to skip later. I'm really jumping ahead, man. Okay, where, 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 where? All right. Yeah, I'll go back to those slides later on. I just want to talk a little bit about where clause. Where you can actually combine different columns, okay? Like, uh, you can actually have more than one column and, uh, or more than one condition that each one of them is um, joined together by an end um, operator. So we need to say that both conditions must be satisfied, right? So, okay, take note of these things first. Uh, I'm going to show you how each of them works one by one. Sorry, I'm just trying to find a suitable table. Okay, there's 1,000 rows down there. Right, this should be suitable enough. Well, last thing is equals to...
Okay, actually I wanted to demonstrate some stuff, but okay, doesn't matter. Let me just jump ahead a little bit. Let's say, for instance, I want to get the list of customers whereby the last name starts with the letter A. Okay, I use the word, instead of equals, I use the word like. And for text comparison, if you want to have wild cards, you can actually use this uh, uh, percentage command. And what's going to happen is that when I click, all the last names down here, they are going to start with the letter A. Okay? Now, let's say I want to uh, be a little bit more adventurous and have two or more. Okay, case okay, one. And I say I want to have customers with the last name that starts with A and a customers with the first name starts with, let's say, D. Okay? This way I use the N command to, to join them together. See? So you will, you will basically um, satisfy both conditions and return to me only the records that satisfy both conditions. But of course, uh, if I want not just N, but I just want it's either starting with the last name start with letter A or the first name start with letter O, then I just change it to R and just show me more records. I mean, the definition of those records is um, like normal English, you know, N is both must satisfy, or means either one of them must satisfy. And of course, you can chain them all up together. All right. So, oh, sorry. In addition to, I, I'm going to jump back to the select later. But now I just want to focus a little bit more on the where because I think that's where the more interesting stuff starts, starts coming in. Uh, you've seen equal sign. You've seen like more for text comparison. There is also a set. Comparison, meaning to say you want to uh, you want to restrict that column that falls within a particular set. Set meaning is just like you know a list of values. So the comparator is actually in I am, and it works something like this. Okay, what this means is that as long as the last name is in Anderson or Walker, it's going to give me the results. And there you have it. Right? So, equality, uh, like, in. For numerical values, you also have the, uh, you know, the, the standard more than, less than, more than, equal to, less than, equal to. So, I'm not going to demonstrate that. I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, range. Yeah. Sorry, just to clarify, that membership, it's just whatever it's literally Anderson or Walker? Yeah, that means it's either one of these two. It's not range, it's just the, the other two. Uh, yeah, correct. It is not which is set, meaning to say as long as it falls within one of the members within that set, it will come up. So you can do like 100 names over here. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's where the, uh, the, the set comes in. Range is more for numerical and date values. You know, between 1 to 10, you know, between, like, for instance. Oh yeah, I forgot the command. Ah. Yeah, between will be something like this, between one and ten. 
and the store IDs will just be between 1 and 10. In fact, if you look at the slides, each and every one of them I've um, sort of like copied an example um, and uh, show you how it works relative to the initial table that um, I showed you. So if you could, you can refer back to that. Yeah, so that is the different where clause. Yes, question. Uh, and there's no way you change that, so it's always uh, Yes, correct. But if you want to, uh, you, okay, good question. Uh, yes, the range will include, but if you want to exclude it, it's actually very simple. You can actually replace the range with a combination of two um, the, the numerical comparison operators. For example, Instead of between 1 and 10, okay, if I want to make 1 and 10 uh, not inclusive, I can do something like this. Where store ID is more than 1 and store ID is less than 10. It achieves exactly the same purpose. Okay, so one thing about this uh, language is that, okay, one thing about actually every language is that it's actually quite flexible. You need to say there's actually more than one way of doing things. All the things like in, uh, if you want to be in or out, you can even, you can even do something like this if you want to play power. Okay, I, I don't have to, but anyway, you get the, you get the gist. Last name equals to Jones or last name equals to Jennifer is essentially the same as last name in Jones, comma, Jennifer, close bracket. It's exactly the same. Okay? I mean, same in terms of results, probably not same in the way that SQL Server does its operations, but yeah, we don't really care about that. It's fun time. Yes? Sorry, come again? Is it possible to call out the first few characters in the string variables? For example, you just want to check whether there are all whether there are any uh, I don't know, like errors in the data sets. For example, you want to see whether any of the leaves can make the sandwich sign, for example. So you call them out to when the character is in the middle of the string. Uh in the middle, yeah, sure, why not? Hold on. Let's say an example, if you want to see whether or not a uh, name has a number 5 in it, okay, it will be something like this. That means you enclose it with, use a like, because it's going to be a text com comparison, and uh, use a uh, percentage to enca encase uh, at the left side and the right side of number 5, so that wherever the part of 5 appears in the name, that entry will satisfy this criteria and will get flagged out. Then, so, uh, you've pointed out another good question. Uh, sorry, just one. Uh, that is that this one is not really commonly used, but it's very, very powerful. But I'm not going to go into it today. Uh, but just in case you're interested in it, have you guys heard of this term called regular expression? In short, regex. Okay? Yeah, you can go in. So, regular expression is a way to, uh, it's a, it's a way to specify. Uh, Tons and variety of you know string patterns, like for instance the one that okay. I'm just closing this. Okay, there's a limitation down here. The limitation is that uh, you can only check with names with five inside. If let's say for instance you say you want to check for any numerical characters within the name, that means you can cover zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct. Uh, using this kind of syntax is a little bit difficult. Um, you can of course change with a lot of all statements, which is not what I would recommend. But uh, alternatively, you can actually use regular expression. Okay, I, I won't go into the syntax. They want to do as an exercise. But using regular expression, you can actually uh, you can actually uh, specify that you want to find out whether the name has any numerical values inside or not. Okay, 
It's going to look a little bit like this, but uh, I can't quite recall the syntax at this point of time, so pardon me for that. But it's going to be something like this. Okay, actual syntax, I would encourage uh, you girls to go and check it out yourself. Sorry, question? So, In my slides, aside from the percentage sign, let me see where I can find it. Okay, aside from the percentage sign, which pretty much means zero or something of that, anything, there is also the underscore character. Okay, an underscore character means that there must be one thing down there. So let's say, for instance, if you want to uh, select, uh, let's say, a name whereby the second and third character is AT, for instance, it will be something like this. See that? There must be something in front of AT. That means A and T must be the second and third character, and all the results. Boom, boom, boom. It's all AT. Okay? And this is definitely, I mean, even just this simple query itself, you can see that it's actually much more powerful than Excel. If you try doing it in Excel, can I mean, if you can eyeball it. But if you have, let's say, 1 million records, good luck to you. So much so good. Yeah. Can you show us how to use the autopilot? Yeah, I'll come to that later. Let, let's not jump, jump the gun first. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to use the underscore of percentage to substitute. Doesn't work for me. Uh, can you show me what is your? Sorry, I'm missing the book. For this one, you must have like the percentage. The the percentage and the underscore only works together with the like. Um, <coughs> like statements, and just uh, yeah, it only works together with like statement. Okay, so equals literally means it must be equal. Like means that it's going to be a pattern match, and it only works on um, text based columns, text based views, whatever. Right? So for the where clause. Any questions? What? Oh, man. Okay, if no question, I'm gonna jump back a little bit. Let me just show you slide again. I've talked about uh, I've talked about from. I'm going to show more detail later. I just jump ahead and go to where clause. That means for all the conditions. I'm going to take a little step back and uh, look at select. Okay, because I actually missed something now. Uh, most of the time, you just um, select column. Alright? But actually, you can do a lot more than that. Okay, you can actually have. Uh, let's see what I have in slides down here. Aside from star, you can also have uh, certain interesting keywords like for instance uh, distinct distinct can be used to eliminate some yeah you can eliminate duplicates so what do I mean by that let's take a look Sorry, shouldn't use this one. Should use customer. Okay, 
Okay, I'm not too sure whether this is a very good example uh, because if the entries don't have duplicates, then there's really nothing much for me to show. Uh, let's try another column. Line. Okay, so let's say for instance, okay, I know this is a very bad example, so, um, but I hope you see the point. Um, if you type select store ID from customer, it's just going to return you all the store IDs from all the customers, right? And you can see that there's actually a lot of duplicates. Okay, so if you use the word distinct, it's just going to show you the distinct or the unique values from the table, right? So under what kind of scenario is this good at? Let's say for instance if you have uh, a database of customers from several countries. Okay? And you don't have a master country data table, you just have everything in the, uh, the customer database. And you want to quickly know uh, how many countries uh, does your database cover. So there's a kind of statement that you can use. Select a state country from the customer like boom. Right? And aside from these things, you can also do a lot of funny, funny stuff. Like, let's see what we have here. You can actually um, perform computations on the column itself, and you can even rename it. Rename, when I say rename, rename is the opera. So, something like this. Rental is not a good one. By the way, I'm selecting tables so that I can demonstrate to you. Okay, good one. Uh, you can see that there's this column called amounts. Alright, so let's say your currency depreciates by 50% and you need to multiply all this amount by uh, 50%. So you need to multiply 1.5. So you can do something like this. Okay, you can just and all the amount just multiply by 1.5 and give you the results. Now, um, just take notes. These are just the results. The underlying values in the database is not touched in any way. All right, so you don't have to worry about, you know. So it's just a view, not change. Uh, I, I wouldn't really call it a view. It's more like after performing computation, it presents to you the results. Oh, okay. Yeah, and everything is just done at the, at the front so end. Wrong this, uh, this one already, so uh, the amount will be The underlying one, yes. Okay. okay. As long as you don't do any updates, as long as you don't do any inserts, you know, the underlying data will always be the same. Uh, it depends. Like for instance, I type something like this, uh, select amounts times 1.5 as new amounts. This is just like a a temporary column or the result set that you see, okay? But if you want to see everything else, it's the same thing. It shows you everything, and at the same time, there's a new column called new amount, which essentially is the... Some more stuff. Just now I only show. Uh, just now I only show what. Just now I only show. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah. Just now I only show the uh, the operations that you can perform. In addition to that, you can also do other things like. Um, oh crap! I didn't really have to come here. You can actually do things like counts. Okay. This is one one uh, command which I use uh, pretty often. 
So let's say you want to see how many, uh, how many entries I have in my payment um, table. Here's what I do. See, counts will just count all the tables, all the entries. I've got 16,000 payments in that table payment itself. Okay? So, aside from counts, you can do a lot of other stuff. You can do things like mean, you can do things like max. Mean stands for minimum, max stands for maximum. You can do things like getting the average. Uh, yeah, so something like this. Okay, hold on. Huh? Let me just explain to you what the statement is before running it. Okay, great. So, under the select clause, I can select the minimum amount, I can select the maximum amount, and the average amount. So, this tells me the minimum price that the person has paid, the maximum price that the person has paid, and on average, what is the average of What is the average amount that is paid for all the entries? And here's what I get when I run this statement. So there's a free entry. There is a uh, maximum amount paid is eleven dollars and ninety nine cents, and the average is four dollars and twenty cents for all the mathematical costs. Okay, simple analytics, just a couple of simple statements. Boom, you have it. Yeah. So uh, when you just when you just let's say you wanted a new amount yeah. for the price, um, could you add in? You did the you did the calculation. Could you add that on into the database? Uh, no, it's just the results. The database is not being touched in any way. So, how, I guess my question is, like, that's capable. Is it possible? Uh, I, uh, first, you need to alter the schema. Because one thing different about um, database as compared to Excel is Excel, if you want a new column, you just type whatever that you want. Database, remember, we have to create a table, and for each create table, you actually have a. Uh, um, you actually have uh, the attributes and the types. So if you want to change the database, you need to alter the table. So you can't do that. I, mean, I guess how is that done? You have to take it out and then read. No, not really. You can just al there's a command called alter table, which um, let me just see what I can show to you now. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't really remember all the syntax, but here's what you can do. So under alter. So, I can't see the screen. Okay, you can actually add a new column down here, and then later on you need to have a lot of update commands to make the change, as in to fill, populate out the entries in that column. Okay, but there is an easier solution, which actually comes uh, a couple of slides later, which is called creation of. Uh, no, I talked about tables. We talked about results, which is results of your uh, of your queries. You can actually save those results into what we call views. Okay, and views will be something like you can treat it like an ordinary table where you can do queries, but it does not really change whatever underlying data. So, like for instance, um, okay, again, let me just jump the gun um, because I don't think we have time for a lot of stuff. So, I want to show you whatever question that you want. So let's say for instance, uh, somebody select or if you want a new column as new amount of payment, right? And you want to make it like a new view in the table so that you can manipulate, not, not say manipulate, you can create like an ordinary table. You can do something like this. Yeah, let me just double check the syntax. As you know, I don't remember the syntax one. Let me just do a quick check. Blah, blah, blah. Huh, yes. Okay. So I run it. If nothing goes wrong, right, it's created. Now, uh, if you see by the side, there is 
tables, right? I'm just fold this. But there's this additional thing called views. Okay, and uh, just now I actually typed new payments. So let me just refresh this. You can see that the, the new view appears. Can you see that? Uncall new payments. And you can actually query this. You can actually query this uh, view as you would a normal table. Something like this. See, it's like a it's like a normal select query, and it has the things that I want. With the additional column down here, column new amounts. See that? So this allows you to create tables which can uh, perhaps be a combination of other tables, and uh, you don't have to necessarily make any changes to the underlying. To the underlying data. Okay, so that is called views. I'm actually jumping like a few slides ahead of you, but well, you get the idea. Right, so where was I? Okay, select. So uh, sorry, this is not. Okay, so select clause, where clause, any questions? Or any other specific scenarios that you want me to point out? Take note, there's actually a lot more than that, but we cannot cover it in one session. Sorry? Date and time. Good question. Well, date and time is uh, the same as if you were to compare a string. Okay, let's say for instance, something like that. Okay, I want to find out. Uh, all the entries that uh, whereby the payment date is after let's say 2005 um, June the 1st all right so that's my requirement and here will be the query it's a little bit like normal text oops Nothing wrong. Hold on. Huh? Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Twenty sixteen. Damn it. Right. So you can see that it actually pardon for the resolution. The resolution is not very good, so you can't really see a lot of real estate screen. Yeah, you can see all the entries down here. Okay, are uh, actually later than twenty oh five um to the first. So the way in which I would compare date and time is almost the same as if I were to compare let's say numerical values or text. That means you use the equal operator, you use the greater than, the smaller than, so and so forth. You can even specify between. That means using the range function. Okay, all these things will work. Alright? Yes. Sorry? Uh, yeah, I can, I, can, I can use range function as well. Hold on. Uh. Payment dates. Right, so right now I'm specifying I only want payments in between the payment date of 2005-06-01 and 2005-07-01. So that's where all my results start. You see, everything is all in June. Alright? Yeah, it's not much squeeze, so yeah, you get the point. Um, actually, there's a lot more, but um, I don't think I'm going to cover them. It's like all seven really. Uh, I'll just move on to the next uh, part of the query, which is where right, was it? Where right, was as I mentioned? Now we the common form clause. Uh, okay. 
actually I sort of missed out the slides. Okay, so let me just explain to you verbally. <coughs> uh, two things that I would like to I would like to mention. Uh, one is the group buy clause. So what does group buy do? Um, as the name implies, it groups results together. So what do I mean by that? So let's say, for instance, I open up a new table. Okay, great. So let's say I want to group by customer ID. You see, customer ID is one, 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 so and so forth. Ah, crap. There's a lot of. My results are so one. See a lot of ones, a lot of twos, a lot of threes, four, so and so forth. So if I group by customer ID, here's what happened. You see? Now the uh, customer ID becomes a little bit unique because there's no repetition. I actually lump up the whole whole thing together and only display the first one. Now you might ask why in the world do I want to do that for? Usually group function, I use it uh, in conjunction with uh, the uh, operations or the functions in the select clause. So let's say the question, let's say for instance I want to ask myself, I want to see for each user how many rentals I have made. Okay, so that's where you can use the group by and another interesting thing is Uh, you see, I combine these two together. Select customer ID, comma, count, which is the function that I mentioned just now in the select clause, from payments grouped by customer ID. And if I want to trigger this off, bam! Customer ID number 1, 32 rentals, customer ID number 2, 27, customer ID number 3, blah blah blah, so and so forth. Okay, and uh, same thing, if I want to know which is the um, biggest sucker that I have, I can do this as well. See, so just based on these statements, select customer ID counts. That means I want, to see, I want to know how many rentals he has made. The maximum amount that he has paid, the minimum amount that he has made. In fact, I can even go one step further and do some, which I did not really mention just now. just come out like this. So customer number one, he has made 32 rentals, the maximum amount he's paid for rental is $9.99, but in total he has paid $118.68 for all the rentals that he has made so far. And if you want to find out who's your most loyal customer, yeah, it's customer number 526, so you know, like saying, we'll be back or something like that, because he's getting much money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, some uh, simple real-life analytics and uh, even in those uh, those companies that does you know, like customer loyalty uh, programs, so, so these are the kind of queries that you know, want to run to find out you know what are the kinds of uh, information and how to actually retain customers. Yeah, drive uh, well. Yeah, so that's the group by clause. Okay. Yeah. If you recreate the view, it will be outdated. That's why it's called a view, because it's more like a window to the underlying data. So if your underlying data changes, the view will also be outdated. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, first you need to run the query again. Yeah. Because when you run the query, this is only a, a point in time snapshot of the underlying data. If let's say after I run this thing, somebody changed data, obviously this one will change. I need to just, re, 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 uh, just refresh the, the query and yeah. move the new account. But it's not create the view with the same name and the 
Uh, no, you don't have to do any of these reviews oh. because the view it, it doesn't create data by itself. Okay. It's actually running the query that defines the view on the underlying table. So if the underlying table changes the data, uh -huh. uh, the view itself, I mean, it's just a window. It's not really an actual yeah, view. Yeah, yeah. So you also see the you don't change anything. Okay. You still see the new data. Okay. Yeah. So don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. So so, so uh, anyways. Yeah, so uh, that is the group by clause. That means you can group them and after that you group by by itself. Not really that useful, but if you use it in conjunction with things like count, max, mean, sum, whatever, uh, it's actually pretty powerful, right? And uh, the last one which I just want to uh, slightly mention is the sorts or the order by. Just like what you asked me about that. So order by is, yeah, like sort of order by. Hold on. So I can do something like this, order by the field name, DESC stands for descending, ASC stands for ascending, and they do exactly what they do, that means sort in ascending or descending order. So you click something like this, boom, see the first ID that comes out is 599, it's just for ordering. Um, it, is, it is a little bit moot point down here because this is a fanciful interface. You can achieve the same function by just clicking on a, on a column name. But for the people who use the console to issue their queries, take note that not all people use this. Some people literally use the console, it's quite scary. Then they will use this kind of you know, order by function to do the solving for them. Right? So much good. Okay, next. Oh, this take a longer than I expected it. <laughs> From cross. Okay, joining. Yeah. Okay, so for all the queries, uh, if you want, you can somehow still issue them in Excel spreadsheet if you want to because they are querying on a single table, which, if you think about it, is not really the you know, most complicated thing in the world. But when you want to you know, um, combine tables together to give you the answers that you need, that's where joints will start to come in. Alright? So, okay, when, later when I talk about joints, please try to relate uh, the many to many and the one to many relationship that I talked about just now. Okay? Because it is only relevant in the context of those um, relationships. So, what do I mean? Let's say, for instance, uh, let me give an example. Again, same query, same table. That means a payment table. Okay? Uh, I only know the customer by 599. Right? I don't really know what 599 refers to. You see John? You see Mary? I wouldn't know. But I want to see them in the same, same place. So what do I do? Very simple. I'll just need to join the customer table with the payment table. And when you join tables, they must have a common column. Okay, so that's, that means for one of the tables, it will be the key, and for the other table, it will be the foreign key. Okay, see all the concepts starts coming together really. So, let me just show you what I want to do. Let's say for instance, in addition to this, I also want to see the name of the, name of the, name of the, the person. Here's what I do, hold on. Select or from payments inner join customer okay I'll, I'll, I'll do this slowly step by step okay one way is because I also do not know all, all the columns I just see this table yesterday only uh, let's see what this gives me okay awesome Okay, if you take a look, I actually use the word. I actually use a few commands. Okay, I want to. Okay, this one, at this point of time, interchangeable. Let me just put customer here, it doesn't really matter. But what it says is that I want to join payment table with customer table. Okay, and the column in which I'm joining them against is by uh, customer ID. So I specify this uh, 
joint function. Payment of customer ID equals to customer dot customer ID. So this is the column that I'm actually using the joint allocates. And you can see that the, the results, in addition to the uh, the payment related columns, which is over here, okay, if you were to drill further down, you can see all the customer information below. See? Get that? Okay. So back to the same query just now. Here's how it goes. the same for all these things. So that's why you need to have the table name in front to let the, query, the SQL server knows which table is you, you are you actually wanting to retrieve from. So I want the first name, I want the last name, I want the ID, I want the count of its rentals, amounts, the max amount, min amount, the sum, and uh, I actually do my inner joint. Okay, inner joint, payment, inner joint customer. Maybe I should write it in a different way. Hold on, you'll see that way. Like this would be easier to see. Uh, yeah, one thing you notice about SQL is that uh, you don't need to have all your queries in the same line. Each query uh, must end with a set by colon. Sorry, I forgot to mention it just now. Uh, so you treat this whole chunk, even though it's of over five lines, as a single command. So sometimes when you write your queries, you can write it in different ways to be easier, visually appealing to see. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you can select all the fields from. Okay, so this whole chunk is the uh, thing on joining payment to join customer, and this is the fields that I want to join against. That means I want to match them against. And uh, lastly, I group by payment of customer ID. Okay, and this is the answer that using. It's exactly the same as just now. Okay, but in addition, I have the name. And uh, just now, the one that my most loyal customer. He's called Carl Siu. Wow. Yeah, so Carl Siu is the, this shop's um, most favorite customer because he has uh, yeah, made the most number of rentals and paid the most amount of money. Okay, so that's how you use uh, Electron. 
Of course, that being said, this is just an oversimplification of what you can do with joints. Okay, in fact, if you want, if you want to be you know, more challenged, you can even join a lot of multiple tables together. Okay, so yeah. Okay, good question. Uh, yeah, I was hoping to avoid that. But anyways. <laughs> okay, um, has... Okay, I'm just trying out my luck here. Does uh, anyone know the set theory? Okay, unlucky. Does anyone know the terms union and intersection? Okay, awesome. Okay, so... In a joint, as the name implies, uh, makes sure that the entry must be present or the entity in question must be present in both tables before it returns the answer. So what does this mean? This means that just now when I've got the customer table, I've got the payments table, right? If let's say a customer has not made any uh, rentals, has not made any payments, in my final query, if I use in a joint, his name will not appear. Why? Because his inner joint is an intersection, meaning to say that he doesn't have a corresponding entry in the payments table. He will not appear in the final results. That's inner joint. Now, so if no inner joint, then outer joint is just the opposite. It's, if you will, like a union. So those customers that uh, do not have an entry in the payments table, they will still appear. They will still appear in the final answer, but it's just that because they don't have entry in the payment table, those relevant fields will just be split now. I'm not too sure whether there's a, such an entry in this table. Let's take a look. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have such an example down here. Every customer has made a payment, so it's a bit hard to show. But hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> Sorry. And outer joint, you write the query as right uh, Yeah, so outer joint. Uh, there is three, very, three, three types of outer joint. Left of the joint, right of the joint, and full of the joint. Okay? So, it, it depends on where you put the two tables. Okay? Over here, if you take notes, my payment is down here, my customer is down here. Based on the scenario I gave you just now, if a, if a customer has not made a payment, uh, I want that customer to appear as well. And because that customer belongs to the customer table, so I want this. Uh, this bubble to be like the, uh, the, the, the main tail, and that's why it's right on the joint, first of all, right side. Well, but you, you don't type after, you just write right side? Yeah, just right joint means right on the joint. Yeah. And likewise, if you, want to, if you want to find out which payment does not have any corresponding customer, maybe it's a ghost payment or something like that, I don't know, then it will be a left joint. Okay? And if you want it both ways, then it's full joint. That means both left and right. Right? Yeah, it's a little bit hard to imagine learning this up also, but don't worry. But most of the time, you don't use other ways. Maybe it's a whiteboard. Whiteboard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see.
okay, can you see the whiteboard? I'm just oversimplifying this, I don't know if you can the cost. So let's say we've got a customer table, we've got a payment table, and the payment table actually has this foreign key called customer ID. Okay, we need to say this one actually uh, you know, refers or references to the customer ID. So uh, if I want to do a uh, alter joint, so let's say something like this. I'm not a very good thing, just for illustration. Okay, customers, let join on the team. You know that, okay, one has corresponding entries up here. So this one up here. Two have entries up here. This one up here. Three. Okay, it doesn't have any entry up here. See, that have. If you have an inner join, the entry for three won't appear. But if you have an outer join, the left join specific, three will also appear. Okay, and it will appear as. That's why I cannot use the right one. One, one, John, five bucks. One, one, seven, John, seven bucks. So on and so on. You reach three. Now, Jane, now. Okay, something like that. That means under customer left joint payments, three rows of here. The values in the columns that correspond to the, the numbers because I cannot find an entry. So it will just appear as N U L M number. You gotta kill me. This is the same God. Shall we do? It's alright. Okay, so let's land on the joint. Now if you want to try to write on the joint. Right on the join, um, you can see that over here, my payment number four actually is like ghost payment. So number four, but four doesn't make an, an entry in the, in the customer database. So the final entry come out here instead of three, you have a four, now, and another two dollars. That means you have two dollars that basically come out nowhere. Okay, so that's right on the join. And if you have a full, Full of the joint, then yeah, both are here. You have one entry with the three J and you have one entry with the four. Okay, so inner joint, outer joint, outer joint, divide it into left, right, foot. Got it? Full joint payment, there are like four, just two, three, and four. Uh, yeah, meaning to say this entry will appear. Likewise, this entry will also appear. And then you add one, two, three, four. Yeah, 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 full list like that. Sorry? I just want to take um, 3 and 4. I'll take the exception one. Oh, you want to take the exception one? Uh, well, you can't do that with join, but you can do that with join plus some other functions. Like, for instance, where. Uh, where That means to say that you see, for entries which have values in the way, okay, with entries that have values in both tables, you'll find that there's two columns. One is the customer ID from the customer table, and one is the customer ID from the payment table. These two will definitely have values. Okay? So if you want to find out entries that either do not exist down here or entries that do not exist down here, you need to put uh, where customer ID equals to now from the payment table, or, or not at this one. Customize it, it was not from the other table. Yeah. That says there's no non-union kind of search. Uh, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. So, yeah, I mean, for those set theories, uh, people, if you know the Venn diagram, inner joint is getting from here, left outer joint is getting from here, right outer joint is getting from, from here, you get what I mean? And full of the joint is whole chunk. If you want to minus this off, then you need the where cost to black it off. You know, it's like the, 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 the normal math, you know, kind of operations. Okay. 
Right. So that's the question for you. Questions? Awesome. Okay, what's next? Sorting, I went past, so there's nothing much to talk about it. Aggregate, just now I already demonstrated, so I hope that you guys probably know how to do it. And uh, some other useful functions. Um, there's some, in addition to the mean, max, um, average counts, there's also other things like now, current dates, or even substring that you can actually use in your, both your select clause as well as the, uh, the, the, the where clause. So let's say, for instance, I want to search the table whereby my first letter don't start with the letter A. Okay? First letter start with the A, first letter. Okay, let's see how it goes. By the way, this is not the most efficient query. I just want to demonstrate a point that you can actually use substring as a function, regardless whether it's in the select clause, this result from select clause, or the where clause. And uh, what it does is that, okay, what this syntax actually means is that it takes a substring from the last name, the first, starting from the first position, uh, length is one. So it's the first letter. And See all the last name start it starts with the earliest one starts with letter B. So I just eliminated all the letter A's on there. Yeah, yeah, this is a stupid example, but um, if you can use it in meaningful ways, again it can be very powerful. Alright. And uh, for dates um, hold on. You can use it like that. Okay. Now, this date and uh, now function, sorry, current date and now function is useful when you want to have queries whereby, let's say, you want the uh, entries that have not expired yet. Okay. Which means that the end date is more than now, N O W. Unfortunately, I don't have any examples down here to show you, but um, you can actually use it in the web clause to state that, to find records that have not yet expired or has not yet reached whatever date that you want it to be. Okay? So that's, uh, and the difference between now and current date is one is date time and one is date. That's all. So um, yeah, those functions you can use it like, even like so. Because those are functions I don't necessarily need a table. So you know, select now, select on date, just show you now the current date. And you can actually use that value for your other web comparisons. Okay, uh, this query is not going to be meaningful now here, but I just want to show you how you can use. Uh, okay, I just want to show you how you can be incorporated into an SQL query. So let's say you want to see which one has been picked or recorded wrongly, for instance. So you can do something like this select all from payment when payment date is less than now. But now you then during execution, it will translate to the current time, right? So uh, this query will make sense because it's going to return you everything. But 
It is a very similar in itself. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have a table to show you how you can use but Hopefully, you'll meet one table which performs this, gives you the opportunity to zoom. So, okay. Now, so far for the select clause, the where clause, the group by, the order, and the aggregate function, and the join functions. Any questions? Yes. There's an exclamation point. Sorry? There's an exclamation point. Where? Uh, it was like from customer where substring the substring Oh. Yeah, sorry. Um this is equals, right? Now exclamation, yeah, I should have only said it. Is the uh, yeah, it's a not operator. So it just means not equal to. <laughs> Sorry, I assume too much. My bad. Okay, so yeah. Uh, the next thing that I just want to briefly touch on. Oh, by the way, um, don't think that uh, by the end of the day you all won't go as SQL experts because it's totally impossible to do. You know. Make everyone as first to just one day. Uh, what I'm touching on is just like the tip of the iceberg of all SQL commands, right? Uh, I would highly encourage you to carry on learning, carry on, uh, you know, reading up about it, and if possible, try it out in whatever that you're doing in your daily life, lives, so that you know you can find meaning and relate it to you, and you can you know learn and understand and appreciate them better. So with that in mind, let's just move on to the next which I think is the last one. It's a sub query, okay? So, what are sub queries? As the name implies, it basically means it's a query within another query. Uh, yes, not surprising. So, uh, a very good example is something like this. It says you find all suppliers who are no customers. <laughs> find suppliers. In my defense, I cut and paste this thing from last night, okay? I don't have time to. Yeah. Uh, so you can see from it now here. Okay, select so name of supplier where name not in. Just now we talked about not in is a set operation, right? But instead of just set, you can you can actually put in a whole new query by itself, whereby the result is a set. Okay, like this. Select name from customer. So select name from customer will just return to you the entire set of you know customer name as a set. For the one on the outside, too. Okay, we yeah, can see a lot of questions here. Let's see what I can example. One moment. Sorry? Yeah, this thing is a, it's a keyword to just give the unique values, that's all. Unique, yeah. That's unique, this thing, you know, English term is the same. So, ah, okay, great. My, uh, the, uh, this is, okay, commercial secrets. This is a question that I always like to ask during when I give interviews to people about their SQL. Is that, um, I always like to ask, uh, given a, t a table whereby you have a salary, okay, in this case would be the payment, which is the second highest um, payment from the table, okay? That means give me just one single number. So, a nested or sub query can be a very good way of doing that. Okay, and I'm going to show you how. Let's see. Okay, so, okay, my aim is I want to find the second highest amount that is being paid. Okay, so my, my strategy for doing so is first have an inner query that gives me the, uh, the highest amount. Alright, and that's this statement, select max amount of payments. Okay, and I'm going to use this query as an input to another query, something like this.
Okay? So what does this mean? Okay, so this one I select a single number which is the highest uh, highest amount. Okay? And in my outer clause, because I've got this where clause that says amount not in the max one. So the first thing that it's gonna do is that it's gonna filter off all the records with the highest amount of decay. And of the remaining ones, okay, it gives me the max amount. So what does this mean? It means it gives me the second highest. Yeah, it's a tricky question, but uh, yeah, I like to ask that. So and instead of eleven twenty nine, it gives me ten twenty nine. Alright? Yeah, this is a good example, but I always dash the you know. Make people nervous by asking this question. Anyways. So yeah, so this this is an example of a uh, a, 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 a nested query. Uh, unfortunately at this point of time, I'm not too sure what the kind of real life scenario that you need to use it in. Um, there will be. But uh, just remember the concept that queries can be nested within one another to form uh, more advanced and a more rich kind of uh, uh, operation that you wish to perform, all right? And uh, views you already covered just now, so I'm going to skip this. And voila, that's the end of my brief, very, very brief introduction on structured variable disease. Yeah. Um, so just now I'm talking about some of Uh, yes, you can do it. It's in the very second one, update. So you know update is a web clause, right? And uh, can I just run back to the second slide? On the, uh, the, the, the. Uh, okay, can you see this example? Yeah, uh, right now over here we are targeting at a specific record. But because this where clause is exactly the same as the where clause that we see in the select statements, this thing can actually be anything. It can be as expressive as you want it to be. Okay? So let's say for instance if you want to say um, I want to rename all the uh, customers where my first letter is an A to Maybe say a name called. Uh, okay, let me just have you know, I see what I'm thinking on the spot. Hold on. Huh? Let me just show it to you. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is not a real life example, and uh, this may be a very stupid example, but I hope you can see the point. You can actually specify the where clause to something that you know specifies a wrong kind of record in your, in your, in your, in your table, right? And you can actually use this as a clause to you know, pick up the entries, and you can use up it to set or you can do operations on it. So, what's happened is that I'm going to change all customers, provided the last name is an A, to pretty. I run it. Now I'm literally changing the database itself. Huh? And um, first thing you see, there's no more A's. It starts from B. And uh, next thing you're going to see is that there's going to be a lot of pretty people down here. Uh, let me just. Yeah, uh, pretty people. You see down here? Okay, so this method, this is yeah, not a very good example, but um, hopefully you can see the points. And you can actually use these kind of constructs to help you uh, update the tables. But one thing that I want you to take note in mind is that uh, 
you better join up be sure that your web was is correct. Okay, because if you made a mistake and you accidentally adjust some other records, it's going to be a bit troublesome. Which is why, in fact, even in my day-to-day -day work, I try not to do this. Okay, because uh, where is the thing? Because these kind of statements is a little bit too dangerous. Okay, if something is specified wrongly, or you know something is maybe you forgot to enter one more additional clause, you might amend more entries that actually require to. So this is from a, this is from a real life perspective that we try not to do this. In fact, if you want to do data training. Usually what we do is we don't go through as well, we literally write scripts where we have more complicated programming ways on you know, changing the entries. But that's the honest for this um, course. But for simple data training, yeah, it's possible. Alright. Questions? Okay, good, good point on that. Uh, okay, remember just now in the uh, attribute types, there is this uh, type known as date time and timestamp. Actually, in the underlying database, it doesn't really store them as strings. Meaning there's its own internal representation of date time. So you can actually choose to display whether it be year, 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 month, month, day, day, or you can choose to display in you know month, year, day, or you can choose to uh, return it in string representation. It's just a matter of formatting what you query. As long as the underlying date is still the correct representation, it's fine. Okay. Uh, but off the top of my head, I don't know whether I can recall the command. Let me see. Okay, awesome. Try to answer all these questions using SQL queries. 
Okay? If uh, you do not know the answers, um, feel free to email me. Um, get, can get my email from. from sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, sorry. You can get my email from Emma. But please try it first before telling me. Okay, don't we'll just straight away after this session. Go outside. Can you tell me what the answers? Are you like? No. <laughs> okay. And uh, I actually have uh, some challenges. These are the more challenging questions. It involves a lot of joints, a lot of conditions. Um, go ahead and try that as well. I think it'll be good for you. And uh, she is pregnant. Yeah, and pregnant. Rest. The end of the course work for today. Uh, like what I mentioned just now, uh, I, I know that this is just a brief crash course, so uh, we all will be able to you know, understand the whole thing. But I would highly encourage you to you know, keep on trying, keep on, keep on asking. And uh, hopefully, today's session serves as a meaningful kind of uh, primary to uh, database management systems. Okay? So, if that's it, then uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you the answer that you're waiting for. <laughs> My age? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually 37 this year, so. <laughs> okay, so, wrap up the course. Uh, thank you all for paying attention today. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad that you're happy here and here. Um, apologies for the slides because everything was just prepared yesterday, so it's a little bit, it's a bit loose. But hope you all have learned something useful from it. Alright, thanks. Huh? Oh, sorry. Victoria, 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 okay, not here. 
Uh, Zhou Xiaojing. Oh, Xiaojing, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. You can, you can go now. Remember to email me the... Thank you.